Simon Hosford from Down Under, and you are watching Show Me Your Pick with Fruitcake Tony. Yes, sir, and we are live. Yes, we are in. We are yeah, all right. Just a couple minutes past nine. Just a couple minutes, but we are in <laughs> fact live. Welcome. Indeed. Show me your pick. Saturday night. Fruitcake Tony, Brendan B. Squared, Charles Green, Ed Dubril, along. We are talking Gizmachi tonight. Yes, we are. Yes, Finally. Long time, Finally. In the, long time in the making. Yes. This is. This is a bucket list show. Absolutely is. And I am super extra excited for tonight's yep. show. It took some uh, pulling together some money, but we finally yeah. were able to get them on. So, yeah. You know. They're expensive. Uh, we can only afford two of them, maybe. So <laughs> it's all good. We're, we're happy to have them. We got it, though. The ride is crazy, man. We did. Oh, I know, dude. I know. So it took so long. Had to hire extra caterers and and, yep. but it's covered. Got to get that, crew. that fart spray. You know the whatever they you spray in the toilet before you go to the bathroom. Poopery. You know you got to get that stuff. Poopery. <laughs> yeah, nice. Ah, um. Nice. So so tonight, talking Gizmachi, we are live and. Th this is a first time thing here on the channel, but we are live on both this channel and the Under the Bus Network. So hello everybody over there. Good Someone to see it. you. Yeah, um, we, we are simul streaming, which they should have called it, you know? But yeah. I, yeah. You know, simulcast. And we're live over on Facebook, over on the Under the Bus Facebook site too, so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's weird because I have both YouTube's up, and you can see, you know, you could see the people in their chat, in their chat, but you can't see them in our chat. But you can see them in, in the, the comments, in here. So it's it's really confusing. <laughs> if that makes any sense to anybody. So. I do. Yeah. Anyway. Right on. Well, we have Jay Hannon and Mike Balls in the green room. They're drinking back there, doing all kinds of stuff, I can see. So, Jay's got his clothes off. Jay, put your shirt on, man. <laughs> uh, he told them to get comfortable. I know. Jesus. A little too much. Ed and Charles, how you guys doing? Had a good week? Yes. Yes. I. Yeah. Very good. Very right good. On. The weather is uh, cooperating yes. right now real nice in North Finally. Carolina, and it's Weird. real hot, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to, I was just going to say, I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but there's fireworks going off right now, big time outside. Already? So, oh. Yeah. Man, I'm starting early, dude. I mean, it turns into a war zone here, I swear it does, man. We got to take care of the dogs, you know, we have dogs and stuff, so it, it becomes yeah, kind of like an it. issue, but that's all right, man. That's what we do. This is 4th of July weekend. Yes, it is. Um, 
it is. I hope yours is starting off swell. If you are on vacation and peeping in, thanks for joining. Mm -hmm. You are watching the Fruitcake Tony YouTube channel and the Under the Bus YouTube channel. I don't know how Hello we, to all know of you. How we could recognize the chat in both. <laughs> That's well, tough. <laughs> I, I tell you what I guess you we'll do. Yeah. I'll start here, Brendan, and I'll see who's in our chat, and then if you want to go over to their chat. Well, I think, actually, they should all show up in here, but I can go over there. I'll go, I'll go in that one. I'm sure they've already, let's see. probably already ahead of us, but let's start right here at the bottom. Gretch Zeppelin, what's up, bro? Good to see you. Charles 75N is oh, right guys. behind him. Kurt 5150 with the under the bus crew Man. what's up kurt what's up brother kurt. Right on, bro. um hip metal works is here right on hip metal brandon hey, hip. charles um i'm seeing christopher live sawa the all-time trivia winner is here today, so it's good to see you bro um andy carson in the house boner andy. jams right on, andy. in the house what's up bro boner. it's good to see you man boner. Under the bus crew boner. joe hervey 84 what's up joe good to see right on, you joe. guitar right. man 45 what's up bro, right on, bro. Good all to see right you, man. randy price what's up randy good to see you bro right on, randy all right um jimmy ray hawkins always good to see you, jimmy. jimmy ray you're getting yeah, them all. Man. You're getting them all, T, because I know you're looking at the comments section in StreamYard, so you're getting both shows. Yeah. So hey, Dennis Ellis. Good to see you. I don't need Dennis. to say hi to anybody. Hold on, brother. And there's Sandra. Hey, Sandra. Hey, Sandra. Sandra. Good to see Sandra. Sa Sandra, Sandra is the co-creator of this Show Me Your Pick show. She hey, is. Tony, can I, can I show something Sandra sent me real yeah, quick? Yeah, go ahead, bro. Hey, she's got a new merch store, and... She sent me this. I meant to actually wear it. Oh, sweet. I really should just put it on. Come on, dude. Uh, but this is cool, and I just love the shit out of it. And, Sandra, we love you. <laughs> Miss oh, you. Cool. You rock. Yeah. Thank That's you. Awesome. Awesome, nice. Dude. Awesome. That's awesome. You, you can find her links down below, and you can get a shirt just like that. Yeah. yeah. Jay's in-laws are here. Carolyn yeah. Hot. Sandra, good to see you, ma'am. All right, Charlie S. is on, here, Charlie. Ed. What on, bro? Ed. All Dave, all night is, too. And then Tim Thomas, he's always early. Good to see Tim. Nice. I think you got uh, all, dude. It's good to see you guys. That's man. it. Well, I, I think you there's a new all. face. Optimus Thrace. Okay. That's right a cool on. name. And John Duchesne yeah, is here, too. And Jeannie hey, says, up, too. Hey, now. Good to see you guys, man. Good to see you guys. Good to see right you, ma'am. Hi, Ellie. Right on. Hi, Ellie. Hey, Ellie. And Killian. Right. Hi, Killian. R2 is here. Can't forget the K-Man. Yeah. Right on. All right, Lawrence I'm scrolling back down. Too. There, There right is on. R2, R3, Lock and Nut, our Good Van you, Halen bro. bro right there. Right there he is. Nice. Did you get, did we get you Charles get, uh, 75 in? Good to Charles see you, 75 Charles. in. Good to see you. Get you. Lawrence right on, I don't know if you Hey, Lawrence. Him. Hitman. Welcome. Saw the Hitman. I think that's pretty right. much everybody. There's Dwight. His ass All right. Good to see you, Dwight. <clears throat> nice. Nice. So yeah, we're talking right. about we're talking about Gizmachi. There's a, a lot to talk about. You think you know the band, but you don't. So we're gonna, I we're know gonna, we're we gonna find um, out a lot about it. You know. Yeah. They span, they span a long way from, from 1998 to now. <laughs> a long, a long harried career. <laughs> but we'll discuss all that, right? Yeah, we, um, we know that they had a couple albums back in the day, and they just completed one a couple of years ago, and we all watched that one happen. Yeah. Um, there's Papa Blue. What's up? What up, Papa Blue? Uh, Bob, um, good to see you, but we know Jay. Jay, um, we've been watching Jay a while here on YouTube. We watched Jay grow up. We did. <laughs> oh, we man. all met watching Jay's old 
show. Um, a lot of good times in the past watching him and wa and watching Jay start his own YouTube channel mm -hmm. the under the bus network. And they're already a year into it, B. Yeah, they are. And, and, you know, check them out on Wednesdays, yeah. Wednesdays yeah. at nine, some Saturdays when they want and some other times when they just want to jump in but yeah wednesday is the main night it's a it's a good time i'm glad i do it's fast it's funny and you will yeah. be offended yeah if you go get a sandwich you will miss something there's no <laughs> yeah. doubt about it my legs hurt because i never want to leave you know i don't want to get right. up and do anything get a you know make sure you evacuate yourself before the show because <laughs> you know otherwise you're gonna miss something or wear a diaper you know but i'm not gonna you know eh, never mind <laughs> yeah but uh, you, you know, went there carol hatcher well so I, and i and i will say this J jay says this we we can mention johnny bean because yeah if it wasn't for him and dave none of us would have met so and that's 100 percent true so yeah um mm -hmm. none that's of us right. would have met none we wouldn't be doing this now We're, that's right we've been doing this three years they've been doing their show over a year you know we've all known each yeah. other yeah. great community the you impact know? that so oh, at that time has on this community right now is incredible it and really things is. evolve and yeah. that's just things that's the way it happens so yep yeah yeah um yeah. we're gonna find out all things gizmachi tonight i'm super excited brendan yeah, you've man. known jay a little while um i'm years. gonna give you the honor of Oh God! Introducing and we'll bring them in, bro. Yeah, I've I've had the the pleasure of knowing Jay. We worked together back in the uh, in the early two thousands, right? So we worked together at IBM, and, and there's some stories I can't say because you know we get in a lot of trouble. But uh, we had a lot of fun. We definitely had a lot of fun. Um, and it's it was you know as soon as I met him, I knew it was a friendship for life. Just because we make made each other laugh, the stupid stuff we did. I'm, he may want to tell some stories, but, um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I've known him over 20 years. I'm happy to call him a friend. Um, Mike Balls, I don't know so well, but I know him through Jay, and he's an awesome dude. And, and you guys will get to meet him as well and, and ask him some questions. So without further ado, let's bring in Jay Hannon, folks, and Mike Balls. Right on. Where'd Jay go? And we lost there Jay. He is. <laughs> uh -oh. Jesus. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> I won't. I'll let you do it. Sorry. Uh, uh, Where's there Jay? There they are. All right. It's Marky. That was smooth. Oh, smooth as that broken smooth. glass. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Stepping in dog shit already. Hey, guys. What's going on, guys? What's up, <laughs> fellas? Jay, what's up, bro? What's going on? We did it. Happy to be we here. Made it. Happy to be here. This is going to be cool because, uh, like you guys were saying, I'm used to being on the other side of the thing, you know, helping the other guys running the show. And now I get to sit back and just answer questions and watch us mess things up. <laughs> yeah. The stress is off. I love yeah, it. Well, all right. It's questions. on you tonight. Um, what? It's all you tonight. Oh, great. All you, bro. All right. Good night, everybody. No. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, so like like I was saying before you came in, Jay, Jay we've known each other forever. Uh, yeah, and it, it's amazing. You know, I, I went to your wedding; that was fun as hell, and uh, saw you at uh, Ozfest in '05. I just happened to be in Chicago. I don't even remember how that transpired, but you know, I don't remember like, either. But I was I like, I was yeah. like, I'm in. Oh no, I must. I don't know if it was Facebook or whatever. No, it was no was Facebook it back, then? back then, man. It was probably just a text message. You know, you it had to be text. MySpace. Yeah, and I'm maybe I don't know, but anyway, uh, but anyway, I'm like, yeah, you know? I forget why I said I'm in Chicago. You're like, oh, so am I. Like, you want to come to the show? I'm like, hell yeah. So, so made that. Ha I still have my VIP pass somewhere. And, well, uh, it, it wasn't just the uh, Ozfest. You came to Ozfest, right. um, and hung out for a bit, 
And then didn't we go to Soldier Field in Chicago? We, we and did. Well, out? we did because you, you were like, "Hey, dude, can I can I use the shower in your in your hotel room? Because I'm not showering on this bus." Yeah. <laughs> sh- you shared the bus with Trivium, and you're like, "Yeah, I'm not doing that." Well, so, they, had, they <laughs> had like they they had like these Mike remembers too. They had like a trailer, like a, like a trailer set up with a whole bunch. Oh, of Oh, for showers. Oh, dude, yeah. yeah you're like, I'm not, I'm not showering there. I'm like, yeah, man, no problem. So, well, we did, but I mean, it was one yeah. of those things where, like, it was just I, a real I, shower is better than a uh, a trailer shower. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah. So we. So I was like, yeah, man. So we're on the way, we're, you're like, Jay was like, uh, should we? Can we go to Soldier Field? I'm like, okay. So we go. It was closed. Of course, we broke in and ran around like idiots. <laughs> but but he, that was he, that he, was he fun. Tackled me at the 50 yard line. Pull my pants down. <laughs> <laughs> There's face right into the turf. So, there suck. But no, that was that was fun. That was a good time. And I mean, the, that was an experience I've never had before with, with all those bands. Got to meet some cool guys. Yeah. And uh, it was and I and uh, I just I recently watched a couple of videos like the one where they were interviewing you guys um there and it was pretty cool. Yeah, and then I watched a couple of other videos. So, one thing I did want to ask Jay is were you playing a Frankie in the answer? You were playing a striped no. guitar. Oh was, man, wow, wow. It was so, striped, right? It was painted yeah. like a Frankie, but it was an Ibanez. Okay. Cuz yeah, I was years, looking years ago, years yeah. ago I um I purchased a guitar. No not many people actually, I don't think anybody knows this. Mike might know this story. But in uh 1999 I bought a Ibanez Universe from Alto Music in Middletown. And it was a def- it was defective. Something was wrong with it. I remember taking it to Shock, the guy. That- shocking. Hey, remember, remember Ed Shelley, Brendan? Yeah. Yeah. yeah remember, so remember he used to set up guitars. He was like he was a right. good guitar tech. So I remember bringing it to him. I'm like I can't get. I forget what string it was. Like wherever I fret on this one string, probably the G it, string. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> like it doesn't. You know, it's not in tune. And he he said something. I don't know if it was a fret was something or a, whatever the hell it was. Something was it wrong. Was, with the it was a fret. Fret was mis- misplaced. They had a bunch of them made like that in '99. Yeah. So basically, Alto Music sent the guitar back to Ibanez, and it was going to be a little while before they sent the the replacement for it, right? So they gave me a loaner. They had an they had a used RG760 there, just a, a plain black one, right? So like, well, these, hold comments, on to- these comments are great. Sorry, Jay. I, no, it's fine. That's fine. But, uh, <laughs> so basically, they gave it. I was like, hey, can I have a loaner in the meantime? Because, you know, it's a fucking $2,000 guitar here, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you just bring it back when, when the new one comes in, right? Now, listen, I'm not a thief. Never have been. The last time I actually stole something was probably when I was IBM. three or oh. four years old. I stole- <laughs> no, yeah, well, yeah, it's never <laughs> They deserved it. <laughs> um, so I stole some like uh, uh, malt, malt balls or something, and my mom made me go back into the store Isn't and tell great? the tell tell yeah. the owner that I just stole these and blah blah yeah. blah. So, right. So, the guitar comes in months later, and I brought the loaner with me, and I left it in the car. I'm like, I'm gonna leave it in the car. <laughs> if they don't ask for it, I'm not gonna give it back to them. Oh boy! Right? Because there was they never had any like paperwork. Yeah. Right? It was like, okay, here, take it, and you just bring it back. So months and months went by. It's like fuck it, it's mine now. So I painted it like a you know a shitty a, the shitty job I did like an Eddie Van Halen guitar. But yeah, I played it in that video. That yeah, I saw that because yeah. I, I rewatched the video. I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't ever notice that before. <laughs> yeah, and so. I know all the all the Van Halen aficionados like Caleb probably if he watches that video, those stripes are all wrong. <laughs> yeah, he, he fro- freeze framed it and was like, no, nah, that's too fat. No. All of them are too fat, but anyway. Well, you had a couple. You had a couple of different guitars in that because you you played. Yeah, we both played ones. two guitars in that. Video. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So how how was shooting that? How was that shooting that video? Um, it was well, in the, a big the, garage. The, it was cold. Right. <laughs> Did you? Was yeah, it? it was in, fun. Where was it, Jimmy's? <laughs> it was in. Uh, it was underneath the studio, wasn't it? In the oh, same yeah. building. Hmm. Something like that. No, it was. No, it was. On the, it was in the basement of a uh, sanctuary. Ooh. I think. Was it Sanctuary Records? Okay, maybe That's it was building. I think. Huh. And you guys did how many videos? You did that one, and you did Wandering. You did the Answer and Wandering Eyes. I yep. think, right from that album. Yeah, yep. Wandering Eyes. We did on our own, um, and then we got in trouble for it. You did? Yeah. I don't know because yeah. we had a because we had a female in the video, and I guess Slipknot at the time had a video with a female in it, and it was like, well, that's kind of too close to 
you know, they were trying to, since we were signed by Slipknot, you know, well, not Slipknot, but Clown from Slipknot. Right. They were trying to, like, not have anything the in the ball, in the realm of, like, you know, the same. And it's like. Yeah, but so if you, you had can't... all dudes in there, it'd be like, hey, you have you have a band in there. It's a Metallica video now because it's all dudes. It's like, yeah, I, you, you can't win sometimes, you know. I, I know. So. Uh, I liked it. I watched it today again. I, th- I think that's a good video. It really is. Yeah. It's a great oh, yeah. video. Better, better than I, the answer video, I'll tell I you that. Sure, I, sure especially, I especially like Mike Balls' singing. You know, yeah. In that. I do. Because yeah. I yeah. can understand him for one. <laughs> I, can't, I can't understand Sean. That's just part of the music, I know. But, I, you know, I can't. I can't that's understand. Yeah. And it's okay. Jay, a lot of us, all of us have watched the, the 05 OzFest. I've watched it countless, countless times. Um, and I want to talk more about OzFest. That was here and abroad. Um, sounds like some good times. I want to hear all about that OzFest tour. But I want to ask you, where did Gizmachi start? Whose brainchild is this? Oh, shit. Well, this is, take this take is, us back, Jay. This is PB. Pre balls, or B. I should say, I should say BB before, <laughs> before balls. balls. Before balls. balls. <laughs> so, uh, it's just us high school. You know, I, I was in a band. Uh, Chris, the bass player, still. You know, he was an original member with me, and we had an old older drummer, Anthony, at the time. And um, just you know, we used to jam. It was more along like along the lines of like Red Hot Chili Peppers. It was like a it was like funk metal at the time, right? Rage Against the Machine influence. So it was a little different. There's Some Creed, metal. Pearl Jam. Yeah, because we weren't we weren't into the super heavy stuff, really. You know, um, that really didn't come until I heard the uh, first Corn record, and then everything completely changed. I got a seven string guitar, and then um, you know, not soon after, it was just like, why well, we wanted to kind of play heavier stuff. And when we got Jimmy in the band for to replace Anthony, you know, Jimmy's a huge metalhead as well, and that kind of took us in that direction. And like, it seemed like every time we'd start to work on new music, it would get heavier and kind of more progressive a little bit in certain areas. And then, uh, Mike, when did you join? 99? 99. 99. And that was, you know, like we always got along with Mike. He was, which is weird, he was a a fan of the band. (laughs) Yeah, I was the the Jason Newstead. Nice. (laughs) (laughs) You guys are an incredible fit. You're an incredible fit. Well, we we you. fit we fit into each other very well. Uh, surprise! Yeah. Oh. surprise <laughs> That's a different show. That's after yeah. eleven. Oh, oh, this isn't under the bus. Sorry. No. Sorry. Hey, oh, no, um, it's all good. No, I was going there. Once we uh, we kind of figured out we needed another guitarist and we wanted somebody that had some singing chops. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike was kind of like the the obvious choice, and it's the funny thing is because he was a fan of the band, and you know we'd always be like hanging out with each other. And we played shows with his band and stuff as well. And it was like, we asked him to join the band. And the asshole took two weeks. <laughs> he had to, well, yeah. like, he had to give this two-week notice to his other band. Come on. <laughs> yeah. It's only fair. Yeah, I had a cool thing going on with some other guys. And they were good friends of mine. And I just felt, you know, I was kind of like the one that got the band going. And, you know, to just kind of end it, you know, oh, like, no. hey, guys. You know, I, I guess I was a little hesitant. I didn't want to. Then I broke it to them, and they were like, "Yeah, do it. It sounds sounds like a pretty cool opportunity." It looked like they sound like they're on the up and up. That's cool. You huh? know, we're just playing in a garage. You know, they got some. Really you know, cool. it's like one of those kind of things. It could have gone another way, but that was good that it went that way, right? You know. So. Well, I think the, the 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 thought always crosses your mind, right? Is like, if I leave this band and join yeah. this one, what if? The band that, that I'm band, yeah. leaving Takes all of a sudden explodes, and you're like, oh, shit. Taking a yeah. chance. But then you think all kinds of stuff. Like, maybe was I holding them back? Fuck. You know? <laughs> so, <Right? laughs> you never know. No, I don't when, know. When, but we, it, when, when we got Mike in the band, it definitely, the, the trajectory went up, and we were able to kind of, you know, write more melodic stuff because, you know, we, we had a voice now that could actually sing the stuff that we were kind of Yeah, when I first came in, I didn't sing, though. Like, that was something that, You didn't that, want like, to. Yeah, I didn't really want to. Like, I never never really did it before, and then I just started doing it, and, like, it, they kind of seemed like they liked it. And I was like, you know what? You know, let me try it. And then I started doing it more, and then a little bit more, and the next thing you know, 
I was full blown doing like the melodic oh, vocals yeah. of Machi, you know, regularly. <laughs> did, did, you, did, yeah. did any of you guys write? Did all of you guys write, or did one person write lyrics and just you guys just jammed and figured out the music? Or mainly Jay and Jimmy wrote the songs. Okay. Yeah, like I threw my two cents in at first, a couple of writing credits there, but you know they it had to pass through them. You know, they were like the kind of the stamp, like, you know, I come up with a bunch of riffs and Jay's like, that sounds like this. And Jimmy was like, oh, it sounds like that. And I was like, all right. You know, oh, so only the like stuff the that, that didn't sound right? like something got through, you know, like, like that was <laughs> like, basically how it was. Like James and Lars, you oh, know, geez. pretty yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> Jay, no. what, what was happening with the band? Talk to us about being just a band and then all of a sudden having a debut album Ooh, well this time what happened was, after that so you know like any band you, you you write music you put out demos and that's what kind of we were doing a lot is just like we'd write some songs we'd go in and record whether it be a you know like a three song five song and then at one point we started doing like full you know re-recording stuff like oh we can we can play that better you know, and then just trying to get it to whoever we could playing shows anywhere we could. And, um, you know, Mike, if I'm missing anything, please interrupt me. But, uh, hey, you're going all right. <clears throat> oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, just playing as much as we could, mostly in, you know, around the tri state area. Um, you know, a few times we would venture a little farther, and it's kind of sucks. And anybody that's in, been in a band knows this, you know, when you, drive three hours five hours whatever for literally no money uh, maybe maybe gas money and, and a slice of pizza or whatever and you're playing in front of the other bands it's a very humbling experience and at the time you're like what's the point like are we even is this even matters anybody give a shit um but then when you look back at it you're like those are the things that made you or make you what you are you know, like more resilient about certain things. And, uh, you know, you, you start to learn how to like, almost like, I don't want to say play for yourself or play for the, your, the rest of your guys in the band. Cause dude, when you're playing this, this, this style of music, it's very hard to get into it when there's nobody in the, in the, in the bar or the crowd, you know what I mean? It's, it's a very weird thing to do. Cause you, you try to feed off the energy of the people watching. Right. So that kind of helps in a certain way of like, shit, you know, what if that one person watching is a record executive or if he's, uh, you know, whatever. You never know you never who's, know. who's right. watching, who's walking past. Right. And like, who the fuck are these guys with nobody watching? And they're going mm -hmm. bananas on stage, you know? So, you know, that kind of shit happens. And then... Yeah, after like a while, we, uh, we got, like, to the point where, you know, at first people were kind of staring at us. And then, like, we were like, that, that we don't give a shit. We just went harder. And then we started winning over crowds. I remember that happening, but that was later on. That was yeah. even like post Ozfest. Like we really started getting like seasoned at that point. We started getting locked in. So had a little bit of attitude, like, yeah. you know, like fuck this. No, <laughs> We're, no. We're MTV two, you had video on MTV two. Yeah. And, well, and then, so I, I, I don't want to cut yeah. you off, but I'm, I'm kind of I don't want to leave Tony's kind of no, section go. out. Um, so basically, after doing all that, um, Sean. Our, our old singer Sean Kane, he went to a Slipknot show in New York City, I believe, and this was probably around 2002 or three, maybe Mike, maybe three, 2003, Makes yeah, sense, right. And brought basically snuck in backstage and found Clown from Slipknot and said, "You're going to listen to my band." And Clown, you know, obviously fast forward a little bit, Clown said was like. There was, you know, every pe bands give me music all the time to listen to, and I fucking throw them away. But he's <laughs> like, there was something about you're gonna listen to my band, and he didn't have a backstage pass on. And he's backstage. He was like, you know what? I'm gonna listen to this band. And next thing you know, we're kind of in, you know, emails back and forth, and he's critiquing songs. So we're like, now we're writing new music and changing things around. And next thing you know, it's like. Um, I don't know, Mike. Remember, there was a point where nothing seemed like it was, like was going on, right? Yeah, it was like we had all this 
clown talk, and it was basically like Sean was the only one talking to him. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, it was like the boy of Cried Wolf. It's like, all right, well, what's going on? Like, we thought, like, this this big thing is going to happen. It's not happening. It's like he's blowing smoke up our ass. So it was kind of like that. Next thing you know, like, we're we're not really doing much of anything because, like, we I don't know. I think we were, like, clashing a little bit, you know, personality-wise at the time. It felt like. Yeah, it could have been, too. But, I mean, we I We stopped guess playing, I think, you, for a You start there. working so hard for something that you think is there. And then it seems like it's a bunch of BS, and you, you kind of get deflated a little bit. I think that's what kind of happened. So literally, it was like probably a couple months we weren't playing very much. Like out of nowhere, it was like, you know, what's going on? Yeah, so, it was like more important things popping up than band practice for a while. There, it felt like we like we weren't even really even playing. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we get a call from Sean saying that we uh, got a showcase in the city at a studio on Easter Sunday. It was. Yeah, Easter with Clown and one of the executives from um, Sanctuary Records. They wanted to check us out, and we were like, "Get the fuck out of here!" Like, you know, it was like one of those. <laughs> and then yeah. was, I guess we better start playing a little bit. It's been a it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, um, and that was so that would that would have been two thousand Easter two thousand four then, right? Yep. Yeah, Easter two thousand four, um, and now mind you, Easter Sunday. It was SIR Studios, right, in New York City. Yep. The studio wasn't open. We had to pay extra for the studio to be open. All right. <laughs> well, now we don't have an engineer. So we had to pay for somebody to, to engineer <laughs> extra to be there, right? And so I don't know how much time we had to rehearse to really try to get back you know, to where we where we were. I think it was a couple of weeks. So we did like weeks, three yeah. or three or four practices each week. Yeah. So I think it was like the night before or something like that. I talked to Clown on the phone, right? And he goes, Jay. Now I didn't really know him. I might have talked to him once before, maybe on the phone. You know, I've sent emails back and forth, but not like on the phone. You know, I'm thinking, dude from Slipknot, like I don't fucking you know. He's, so he's like, Jay, I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> You guys are going to set up. If I walk in and I don't like what I hear, I'm just going to leave. And I'm like, holy shit. Right? Like, how do you handle that kind of pressure? You know, you're like, you, basically, I have five sec. We have five seconds to prove ourselves. Damn. You know, so obviously it wasn't like that. He was uh, super cool. But, uh, you know, we fucking, considering you're literally playing for, you know, Sean from Slipknot and the dude from Sanctuary Records, and then the engineer. Um, we, as Arsenio said, we rocked the house. Good. <laughs> yeah. you know, so we, went, we went all out. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Obviously you did because, you know, they signed you. And Sounds you, like a defining you know, moment. You know? yeah. I kind of I kind of knew it was going well after we played uh, the one, the Brendan, uh, the last song on the album, Voice of Sanity. Yeah, yeah. When, after we finished it for the first time, Clown walked up. He said, play that one again. And I yeah. was like, when they want to hear a song twice, an, an eight-minute song <clears throat> twice. Clown, yeah. Clown loved Voice of Sanity. Yeah. That was the main song that got us, like, you know, that was the song that made us made him sign us, really. That's, That's a really interesting song. It starts out fast. It's in your face, melting killer fast. And then it just gets so slow and melodic and it's just mind morphing. It's really a trip. And then the last three minutes of the song, it gets heavy as shit again. It's really, it's a great song. Thank yeah. You. It goes out like how it comes in. Yeah. Exactly. Tied all together. Exactly. You're not wrong there under the bus. Balls is a, is a handsome fellow. He is. That, that, I'm yeah, envious of those you. curls. Those that's curls. a great story too. That That's cool how that happened. I'm going to go get another beverage. Wow. I'll be right back guys. All right. All right. So, yeah, so Jay, did did that at that point? Did that open up more doors for you? Um, as far as um touring, um, well, basically, when that happened, it was like you guys need to uh just play, play your asses off. Whether it's playing shows, hey Cameron, hey Cameron, it's my buddy, um. Oh, let me some Cameron Brown. Uh, so now, Cameron, you got me all flustered now. I can't even think straight. <laughs> uh, basically, it was like you need to, you know, write some write some more music and just play as much as you can, whether it's live, whether it's practicing, anything, just to 
you know, hone everything. And, um, you know, it wasn't like we were in the door, though. They said you still have to, you know, there's still some rough edges. Mm. Uh, so basically just, you know, refine everything. So it was almost like we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there, you know. So then basically fast forward uh, to November of 04. That's when we went in the studio to spin. In, uh, uh, it was okay. September. Was it September? Yeah, we did oh. one. We did we did one in September for a, how long were we there though? Was it like a week or like a few days? Oh, that's right. Because at first it was you guys are going to do an EP, and we we were as a band we were kind of like bummed, right? Like, damn man, an EP. Yeah, it was going to be like a four song EP, and then we ended up getting the eight song album, and we went back in in November. So we had September, we went in for a little bit, and then November to finish it up. Yeah, but literally, like we did the whole album. It felt like I don't know two weeks, a little. Wow. <laughs> that's that was the report. Anyway, it, it seems like it was a it's a blur when i think back and there's supposedly well mike has seen the box of of uh, videotapes how many hours of footage is there from there's, that, uh, there's a lot it's hundreds. the mini tapes a huge box uh, full of those little mini little DV tapes, tapes. Little yeah. DV. there's like hundreds of them wow yeah uh, cool clown clown's assistant or whatever it was he basically his job was to film that in that he recorded movie. the entire time like he didn't okay. stop filming wow. everything and if That's he did stop cool. filming he got he got yelled at for it <laughs> yep wow. you know, we're, to sleep, well, right? we're all shooting the shit and everything and it's hard not to get caught up in it yeah you know it's like oh here comes a tornado of fucking fart talk how do how do i how do i avoid this i have to get in it <laughs> and then and then remember his name was ben he was, a, he was a cool dude and then he'd start shooting it with us and then clown would come out hey ben where, where's the camera <laughs> oh shit! You know? But so and so, it says that imbuing's the second album. So the second album. So what's what's this melee album? What oh is that? God, let's forget about that album. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was looking at the vast, uh, you know, Wikipedia that you have. It's like three three sentences long. Um, yeah. I, know. I don't know who wrote it. It's okay. But anyway, it says Melee in 2003. Melee is like an al album that we put out independently. We weren't signed yeah. to any label or anything. And yeah, that was before that. That was, that was what got us signed, right, Walls? Basically, kind of. Those songs, at least. That's what got us signed, you said? Is it? Melee? Yeah. Our, our showcase with Clown got us signed. Oh, no, I'm talking about like this, the CD <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> nah, <laughs> it's like... Once you started hearing like Romantic Devastation and the demos of Voice of Sanity, that's when Clown came into the picture. And that was more like 03 yeah. era. Okay. Right. But that so was you, still you around that time. I do. That was still around that same time, though. So, and well, Melee been... was recorded in late 99 into oh, okay. early 2000. So that's, that's, that's old, old. That's right. That was before. So it's, Brendan, it says 2003. It, it, says, 2000, it says 2003. But oh, this is Wikipedia. In 2003, so we had a three-song uh, demo that included People Show, Romantic Devastation, and Voice of Sanity. Right. Those but, are those you know, demos. Pe people can edit this, so anybody could have put that in. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, go edit yeah. it, Brandon. Tell them it was 99. I, yeah, I will. <laughs> I tried I'll to fix it myself it once, and I, just, I, I couldn't figure it out. But yeah. that's the story of my life. That's, that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> Jay will tell you. That's... <laughs> Hey guys, one of the dogs is freaking out from all the fireworks. I'll be right back. Hi, right, buddy. So also says in here that the answer was featured on a 2006 video game, Final Final Fight Streetwise. Oh, shit. Is that true? That was before. Wasn't that it said 2006? Well, it's it's true that it's on the game. Okay. Um, well, it's a PlayStation 2 game. So I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> how long ago was that you know wow. what's funny yeah. is i remember hearing from somebody that that that's, that's how they heard of, of the band is from that's that pretty game. cool though <laughs> what? I, mean, that was, I feel like that was happening on the down and down of his <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah but, but you, you hear about that now like all this stuff's in like the metaverse like like Fortnite. they're having like actual concerts and stuff it's like how is all that happening you know it's weird Jesus. stuff you know it's just yeah. strange how technology has changed you know you guys are like pushing cds you know, yeah, just we, throwing we, them at, we, at radio stations, right? We you would, know, and... I remember buying. Uh, remember they when they started having like the CD burners and the computers and stuff like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I remember sitting up. I mean, Brendan, you remember like when I worked oh, yeah. nights at IBM. You know, oh, you're yeah. working six p.m. to six a.m. or six thirty, whatever the hell it was. Yeah. I'd get home and we'd have like we'd have a show that night or something, or there was a show in the area, 
And I would just sit there for like four hours and just burn, just CDs, burn CDs. Yeah. And then yep. go to sleep for a while and then, you know, get up <laughs> and then go, you know, hand write on all these. And I have the worst handwriting on the planet and try it's, to like it's true. hand these CDs out of, the, you know, in line of, of people that, you know, right. are going to like a different concert or something like that. Right. And that's the shit that bands did back in the day. Mm -hmm. And that, and that, that was hard. And th those are the ones that, that really, they really, you know, ground down and did that. Those are the ones mm -hmm. that made it. The ones that were just the most dedicated and didn't, didn't freaking sleep for days, yeah. you know, but, and it paid off, you know, I mean, it definitely paid off for you guys at the time. So, and, you know, think of the difference, right. Compared like, right. I mean, how many years ago? Let's just say the album came out in 2005. So that's, right. uh, 17, 18 years ago. Yeah. It's 18 Isn't years it? ago. Think of how much the, the landscape and music has changed. Like it's none insane. of that, none of, none of it happens like that anymore. No, you know, no, Jesus. it doesn't. I mean, everybody's like, you're, you're doing stuff now and all and tomorrow there'll be a, a, a song with all of us, our, our voices in it, you know, <laughs> AI could do that shit now. That yeah. scares me. The AI stuff a little bit. Yeah. It's pretty know? wild. You know, I just so. recently started like diving into that on YouTube, like all like making, you know, yeah. you know James Hetfield saying under the bridge and like, it's like, what? <laughs> it's think, wild. I just yeah, heard I, them do Vicarious by Tool. It's crazy. James right? Hetfield's voice from the Black Album sounding yeah. James Hetfield over Vicarious by Tool. It's pretty wow. awesome. But <laughs> well, Jay was talking about, I think you were talking about on one of your shows that how they like, didn't they do like redid Master of Puppets or something in a different genre or as a kill them all. I can't remember what you said. Yeah. They were Make doing stuff like justice or something. and it sounded better. <laughs> you know, when yeah. they did it like, yeah. you know, justice era doing master of puppets or something, you know? Well, I told Mike that I was like, we were, I was joking in the, in a the Gizmachi text thread. I'm like, yo, with all this AI stuff in a couple of years, we'll be able to have, if we ever do another album, we can have anybody sing you on can, it. Yeah, you can. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's get Elvis. That's going to be a, that's going to be a copyright <laughs> nightmare. You know, if that Eddie, happens. Have yeah, Eddie Murphy, I have Eddie Murphy from uh, Party All the Time singing on Gizmachi. Be, oh, <laughs> oh, my God. God. Eddie Murphy. Party All the Time. That'd be awesome. My God. That's freaking hilarious, dude. But yep. so what um, What are you guys up to now? I know what Jay's up to. but So, Mike, what are you doing now? Like, um, are you doing any any music, who's, writing anything? Who's, doing, who's got a pack? Sounds like somebody has a pack of tobacco that they're... Or uh, Where? You're reaching into who's that? Who's got the flashlight? It's gotta be Tony. <laughs> like a big Look at me, man. Too. My hands are right here, son. Oh, yeah, it was like a crackling, like digging in a bag, a combo. Hey, there, it is. <laughs> there it is. Oh, it's my you're bag in, of picks. You're in the big league. <laughs> big league chew. Yeah, right, go ahead. Yeah. So yeah, yeah my, I was just working. Uh, I work on my uh, solo music now. I get to it when I can. You know, I got a regular job. You know. I get at it when I can, and I, you know, I release some stuff, you know, on okay. Apple Music and Spotify and whatnot. Okay, cool. Nice. Call the world apart. That's my project. The world apart. All right. Yeah, Everybody, cool. check that out. Mm -hmm. Go yeah. buy some. Go buy some of Mike Balls' music. Hey, thanks for definitely. The support. Yeah, man. <laughs> we are gonna talk more about um, Ozfest, which I'm so dying to hear about and we're going to talk about the the 2021 gizmachi album too and the motivation behind that we all watched that happen a couple years ago um and a lot of us have it but what doesn't everybody have it i know exactly <laughs> there's links down below you can get it so get it yeah, the links are in there, kids. Yeah. Go yeah. click it. Click they it. are. Um, I'll tell you what. It's 10 till. Yeah. This is a good time as any, I guess. To do trivia? Yeah, why not? To change my pants. That's what it's... Uh... This would be a good time <laughs> to, for everybody to grab a drink. And... Yeah, man. Go to the fridge, make a sandwich real quick. Scrub the brown eye. <laughs> <laughs> With the bottle. And we'll get right back into Gizmachi. I, think, I, I was saying, I say this every week, but now that Jay and Mike are on, I, I think I think we have to have a contest with this with this riff. I think people have to make make this riff their own, and then 
Let's see who's his best. You know? Well, all me and Mike have to do is, is uh, you know, change the time signatures a couple, couple, there you go. few here and, and there, and you know? Like, crank the guitar yeah. like you did on that, you know? <laughs> yep, some bridge <laughs> bending in there. Yeah, that's it. I thought that'd be cool, but... This Fair, is... Certainly not. Ten shot rock and roll trivia. <laughs> we are playing... We're playing for... Let me show you what we're playing for. But should be. That's you, you should change that, Tony. You don't know shit about rock and roll. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, We're playing awesome for pick. a Meshuggah pick tonight. Sometimes. sometimes Nothing on the back. Way. A friggin' Chaos Beer pick. Right. Um, right. And we'll toss mm -hmm. in some other cool guitar picks. Um, show me your pick picks. Brendan B. Squared picks. Ed DeBril picks. Halenville Live Picks, and we are doing a show on Tuesday. By the way, we'll talk more yeah. about that later. July fourth. July fourth is Tuesday. And if you're old, it's Tuesday. 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 <laughs> Tuesday. Tuesday. That's right. Um. So, this is. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Mike. Yes, we awesome. absolutely oh, fuck do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> this round of ten shot rock and roll trivia is brought to you tonight by the brand new Fruitcake Tony merch store. There's yep. links down below. Um and we might look at that later. I've got in a window, I've got the, the merch store for, for Jay and Kurt and Boner and Caleb for their <laughs> under the bus merch store too. Ah. And that's a brand new store and some very cool stuff. Yeah, get you some there. stuff. Well, thank you. Yes. He's, he's not Boner anymore, uh, Tony. It's uh, Brian, 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 who is, okay. uh, now who is that guy, Uncle Laser? I never heard of him before. Just some Pretty dude? Funny as hell. Is he like a YouTube guy? <laughs> he or? looks like like he lives here in North Carolina, oh, I swear. That, that was so <laughs> awesome, though. Did, so, did he's just, did he's just the guy that, I guess, stepped in shit and just, did, you know? Did Brian give actual, do a cameo for oh, Kurt? Oh, well, of course. Uh, Uncle Wade doesn't give a fuck who we are. <laughs> Brian, Brian. <laughs> this, is, this is the best. <laughs> Man. That was oh, cool. Oh, God, so funny. Kurt. Kurt. Ah, Kurt. Kurt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude. man. Kurt Love probably bought him a six pack or something. Oh, my God. <laughs> and oh, before we start, let me yeah. say it's nice to be able to watch you guys, Jay, on Wednesday night now, now that we've changed the day from Wednesday to Tuesday for Halo and the Live. Yeah, man. That's right. So we can watch each other. Yeah, at the same time. It is nice to watch. It's a lot of fun. Live. Yeah, There's, it's a lot of fun. What's up, Trev? I love watching Smitty. it. Smitty. Smitty. Trev. Trev. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. We are playing 10-shot rock and roll trivia. Good luck. We're playing for a Meshuggah pick tonight. This is Show Me Your Pick. If you're new here, we talk guitar picks and rock memorabilia every Saturday night, and we cut up and misbehave and God knows what else um, that we do. But um, thanks for being here. Subscribe if you're not already. We appreciate that. We're approaching 1,000 subscribers. Thank you for your support. Great to see all of you. Good luck. If you are, in fact, the winner for tonight, there's a trivia winner's email down below. Trivia winner's email. Hit me with your name and address, and I'll be mailing you out a cool prize pack with a bunch of cool picks, including that nice Mashuga pick. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Brendan B. Squared is the judge here. Trivia is a fun as hell way for us to give back to you guys, but there is a delay here between the StreamYard and the YouTube rebroadcast. There mixes up the chat order. So what we see it and what you see, but the first correct answer that 
we see that Brendan sees is deemed the winner of that. Well, he's question. the judge, jury, and executioner. He is absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's right, motherfucker. And the I hope there's not, not a tie it. because it's I don't have any more of my sugar picks. Sorry. Yeah. So we'll have to work something out. I got a lot of stuff. Everyone will be happy, I'm sure. But good luck. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> these some some of these questions are very difficult. Some are layups. But some are in the spirit of weeks past and fun as hell. Let's get started. Good luck. Okay. Right um, we hadn't shown Jay and Mike these questions, so um, so are they eligible, head. Brendan? No. <laughs> <laughs> had nothing to do with it, Jay. Friggin' sit there. If no one had if, nothing, if, to if do no one it. gets it, we'll let them answer. What the hell do I have to do? Take you downstairs to a private room and ask you? Huh? Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> oh. You could have man. soundboard battle. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll get nothing yeah. done. Right. Yeah, we are. No, I don't care if you guys want to answer. That's fine. You don't know the questions. So, yeah, it's all good, man. I'm all fine right. with that. I'm fine with that. Speak up. All right. All right, let's you can go. Donate to your favorite charity. <clears throat> yep. All right, charity. number one, good luck. Get ready to type. No, he the wants first the answer pick. we see is the winner. Whoever has the most after 10 gets the prize pack. <clears throat> let's get into it. All right, number one, here we go. This band achieved major success in the early 1990s with their hit, Give It To Me Good, reaching 65 on the Billboard Top 100 in 1990. Name the band. No. I don't know that. I had this CD. Andy Carson. Yeah, Andy Carson already has it. It's Uh, Trickster. Wow. Trickster. I I had that CD. I bought it at Caldor. Did you really? (laughs) Caldor's. Nice. Caldor. Wow. And got and got made fun of for it. Holy shit. And then my brother in law put that uh, CD in the microwave. You ever put a CD in the, CD in the oh, microwave? Oh, yeah. That, that's cool looking when yeah, that happens. It's awesome, unless it's a trickster CD, asshole. Ah. <laughs> oh, no. That's hilarious. It's especially awesome when a trickster CD. <laughs> I still sparkles. have that CD in a drawer right over there. Oh, in man. your drawers? Well, yeah, he puts it in his drawers. Yeah. Later. Well, I, I'm not wearing drawers, so it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> if you're the winner, you'll probably be getting a Andy Carson cool guitar pick too. Nice. Andy, Andy's yeah. awesome. Yeah, he makes cool picks. Gives out cool t-shirts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so Andy Carson's on the board. All right, let's go. Number let's go. Number two. Let's go to number two. Numero dos. All right. So this stays in the spirit of question two from weeks past. Let's do it. (laughs) Complete the next line to this song. Say your prayers, little one. Don't forget my son to include everyone. I tuck you in warm within. Keep you free from sin. (laughs) Mike, you got to sing it after the uh, answer comes through. I know. Need all the words. I know Jay's singing it in his head. Need all the words. Randy Price. Randy Price, I see. All right. So he might be, I don't know if he's in this chat or in, a, in a under the bus. No, he's in this one. Okay. Yep. It's Randy. There it is. Till the Sandman he comes. Till the Sandman he comes. The Sandman he comes. Ah. I'm glad he said till. <laughs> right? That's, that's right. And he. Oh. Sometimes you leave the he off. Yep. Right. Yep. Yes, sir. Ah. Caleb, Caleb in the in the chat. Till the same man he comes. Yes. He is. Look. Caleb, what's up, man? Look right Caleb. here. Yes. Hey, hey, what's he up? Nerd wow. Allen himself. The Caleb. Caleb. In the house. house. What's up, guys? Hey. Good to see you. <laughs> I'm at Guitar Center. You guys remember this? The gang's all here. Same I'd like age. to request isolation. Again. <laughs> That's that's where I got my first Ivan as the one in uh Paramus, right? Yeah, man. Yep. Shut that's down. It. Yeah. 
There you go. Yeah. Nice. Sorry, we're, we're, we're interrupting. Uh, sorry, trivia. Trivia. sorry, Tony. No, is, no, no. Is that no. the one that? That's not the one that. Uh, that you messaged me about was it, Jay? The one that got uh, eaten. That Ibanez. Yes, that's the one. Oh, son of a, I don't believe him either. We'll talk about that a little later. Yeah, we'll have to. We'll get him on the air. <laughs> All right, T, number three. So we got Andy Carson and, and Randy on the board. All right. So we're going to number three. Okay, number three. All right, so we're going to show you a picture of a band, and you're going to ID this band. I want to see if Jay knows this, because I didn't. Maybe Michael knows. I don't know. I don't know. You never know. Let's see. Yeah, in this spirit, we, we show you a picture and you got to ID the band. And th it's not Gizmachi. So it's, we did do that. We've done that before. Like a month ago. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Renus Pinkle. Who hey, Renus. Renus. Hi, Renus. 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 Okay. All right. Here we go. ID this band right there. Oh, my God. Who are they? <laughs> Enough's enough. <laughs> no, that's a good guess. Good guess that was a good look, guess, though. Look at the no. look at the the pepperoni cock that's on the. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What the hell? They got uh, Italian meats going on. No, it's not. I see an answer. Renus has got it. Wow. Yes. Wow, Renus. Renus. Jeez, I was I was reading good. the other ones. Good job, Renus. <laughs> yeah. Look at that singer has the crescent moon face. You see that shit. Yeah, this guy on the left looked like my substitute teacher. <laughs> Maybe it was. It might have been. Well, the guy on the left, if we don't know, is Tommy Thayer. That's right. Wow. The, the guy the guy in the middle definitely looks like D. Snyder. That's why everybody he keeps does, saying yeah, he does look a little like D. The guy next yeah. to Tommy Thayer looks like Phil Collin. If he, is, you know, is, he holding, yeah. is, he, is he holding pizza? On a freaking spatula? What is that? Yeah, it looks yeah, like yeah. Oh, they got a lot of food in front of him. And he's got the pepperoni near his pants. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's another cock down there. That was on yeah. purpose. There's a lot of, lot that, of meat in this picture. That might have been on purpose. Yeah. All right, so so Mr. Mr. Pinkle's on the board. Renus. Right on. Of course, he'd know the question with all the pepperoni on it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you see Randy Price's comment? Yeah. Anyone notice Same like, oh, oh my God! Wow, <laughs> that's, that's 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 uh that's obscure. Oh, that's pretty good. But Where's is it at? Me? B highlight here, right here. <laughs> <laughs> Louis C.K. is a comedian, if no one knows, and yet <laughs> 2004 Sammy Hagar. <laughs> wow, Louis C.K. Damn. I don't. I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't, I don't see, see that part either. Yeah. Ed's <laughs> not gonna let you. Ed's not gonna let you guys crack on Sammy Hagar in here. Oh come on! Oh, I thought it was making. <laughs> we're making fun of Mike, not Sammy. No. <laughs> uh, all right, man. Let's go to number four. All right, number four. All right, let's see here. Number four. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this this might be difficult. But... All right, so number Randy four, good luck. Talking. Here we go. What band had the 1987 song Back to Paradise from the movie Revenge of the Nerds 2, Nerds in Paradise? Name the band. Do you know this one, Balls? Caleb? No. I figured you would. Revenge Back of the Nerds Paradise. Band. That was a shitty movie, wasn't it? Yeah. The second one. Yeah, a lot of yeah. sequels are bad. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not seeing it yet. Well, the one, the one dude that went on to do ER, right? He uh, oh, there it is. Uh, there wow. it is. Dennis wow. Ellis. Dennis yeah. Ellis. Dennis. We'll play wow. Bro. Yeah, and Renus Pinkle was right behind him, and so was Ojo yeah, and Ryan behind. too. Nice. I hope <laughs> we don't have another nine-way tie. T. We've had that <laughs> That's before. My mom. Yeah, it's always. Was ben that Ben Tom's Tom? mom is in every yep. band. Yep. 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 She's been in every Night Ranger. Someday he'll get it right. He might. Right. Yes. <laughs> don't <laughs> don't talk about a tie. <laughs> nah. Don't talk you about know? a tie yet. How many of them Holy sugar picks shit. you got? One. 
there you go. So there'll be a there'll be a uh, if I if if so if there's a tie, we'll have Jay or Mike have a tie break question. Think think oh, so. Okay. All right. All right. Leonard. He Hatchett. said it. I didn't. Uh, he said it. He said it. All right. Caleb got this one. Disclaimer. Leonard. Hatchett. <laughs> Leonard Hatchett. Okay. All right. What's the score, B? One one a one one. <laughs> Everybody's got one. So All Dennis, right. Renus, Randy, and Andy Carson. All right. All right let's okay. go to number five. Number five. Number five. Number five. Right. Number five. Right. Bambo, number five. All right, number five. You know what that means. This album contains the songs I Was Made for Loving You and Sure Know Something. Name the album. Oh, I know that one. The album, not the, you can you can say it, Mike. No, no. I can't say it yet. I'll give it up. Uh, oh, Renus, Renus, Renus Pinkles in there again. Yep, Renus. Has Renus. Got it. Oh, good. Yes. There's not be a tie then. Freaking dynasty. Renus. Pretty good album. McCarthy. Love Gun. Love Gun's my favorite Kiss album. It's funny. Those two songs are the only ones that are like disco influenced. I know. I know, right? Yeah, the rest of the yeah. albums like they're typical I'm rock stuff. For loving you. Yeah, All Love right. Gun's a good album too. I love that. That was favorite. a layup. Favorite Kiss album. How that many people one. here like the sound of rock and roll music? <laughs> Jay, I love when you do that on the show, dude. Yeah, you sound just like him, man. <laughs> I, I gotta learn the lyrics to Love Gun because I don't. I, I, somebody, I forget who keeps telling me to sing that. Is it you, Ed? <laughs> no. Somebody in the chat every time I put that voice <laughs> up, like, can you sing Love Gun, please? Love Gun. That would be great, though. Love, love Gun. Gun. Yeah, that so I have that cassette. Funny. I'm looking at the cassette right wow. now. Wow, <laughs> Jesus! I, I still played your love. Shit. That's, that's a good song. He had the cassette. I played the shit <laughs> out of that. He's got it on cassette. He does, and he oh, still dude. listens to that cassette. I don't have a cassette player. <laughs> okay, number six. All right, number six. Renus is in the lead. Renus. You guys are playing catch up. It's still anyone's game. Just uh -huh. going to number six. Mm -hmm. All right. So this one might be a little tough, Charles. This is a tough one. We yeah. talked about this one the other night, me and Charles did. All right. So number six, let's go. I didn't know it. Mike Ennis, Howard Lease, and Gilby Clark are all alumni of what band? Hmm. It's a great question. Machine. I don't know that. Question. <laughs> da, da, da. This might take a while. Da, 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 da. Oh. Yeah, no, I'll well, be right back. John, no John way. Deshane. John DeShane got it. Hang on. Hang John on. Deshane. He got the answer, right. John. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No. Holy crap. Now, oh, John. are you sure? So, well, so in the I'm, chat, I'm seeing Randy Price's see Randy. name. Well, see, they're, above the, they're, John they're at the same time. So, whose name is at the top? B. It's see, your call. Uh, Randy. Hang on. Let me let me look. Because Randy is. Oh, you know why? I, you highlight know why? the top name. No, it's Randy. It's it is yeah. Randy. So, because Randy's in the under the bus chat, and I was looking at the. Show me your pick chat. But then I looked at the oh. comments, and, and Randy's name's above. So it is Randy. Yeah, Randy. And then sorry, I see John. John. Hip Metal I'm Works sorry, right John. behind him. Lawnmower Tapes. This this is a that sucky one. I don't, I don't like this. No, it's not Steel Dragon. I don't want to be a dick. <laughs> but All right. Anyway, no, it's, it's Randy. So heart is the what? answer. Heart is yep. the answer. So it is Randy. So Randy and Renus are, are in a two-way tie right now. No balls. Yes, that's He's correct. on his third Heineken. Oh, oh, yeah. My last Heineken. Oh. All right. I won't, I'm just. I'm going to look at the this chat in the in the comment section here. I'm not going to look at the YouTube one because. And guys, later Good on idea. too, I have a um, unboxing. Oh yeah. Don't let me forget. Kind of unboxed him. That's from the asshole Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's maybe, from Kurt. Okay. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a under the bus hat. Could be. 
Oh, oh you just spoiled the, you spoiled the surprise. I don't know what it was. <laughs> I would guess. I would just What's guess. What's the point of the box tonight? Might as well just throw it in the garbage. Shit. <laughs> I I looked at the the name on it, and it normally says something my mail does, but this time it said fruitcake Tony, so uh. I knew it was it was an unboxing. My God, who thing. the hell cares? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Damn, son, you find this? I can't wait to open that thing. Let's go to number seven. Yes. Number seven. Number seven. seven. Two way tie. Oh, shit. Renus and Randy Price. We are in the middle of 10 shot rock and roll trivia. If you're I, just see what, us. I see what Renus did. He switched the two. Never mind. All right. Let's go. All number right. Seven. So, number, seven. number seven. So this is. A, a standard question um, for you guitar pick collectors out there. Perk up. Yep. Come on back. You in the kitchen? Come on back. Time to get on the board. All right. Mm. Number seven. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> what was the base color of the guitar picks for both Jakey Lee and Phil Susan on the 1986 Ozzy Ultimate Sin Tour? The base color of their picks. What was it? Not the color of the base pick, but the base color of the pick. <laughs> yeah, the color. My Even favorite the, um, Ozzy the guitar player, by the way, Jakey Lee. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. You like him more than Randy? Oh, oh God, yeah! Randy's Dude. my last, my, my least favorite oh, Ozzy Osbourne guitar. You like Brad Gillis over Randy too? No, it's uh, Jakey e. Lee. Rand, um, Randy Price is in. Randy Price, he's ahead of uh, of, Randy. of uh, Randy Rhodes. You see it, T? I don't. I got it. Don't. Here we go. People are throwing any color in there. That's not it. I clicked the wrong one. There it is. There it is. It's pink. All it's right, Randy pink. Price. They are pink. pink. Balls, I don't know if you can see Randy Price's um, avatar to his name. Who's controlling it? B uh, butt cheeks. Go back to yeah. Randy Price. There you go. Can you see that? Uh, Friggin' uh, 89 Headfield, right? Yep. Oh, best yeah. 89 Headfield, best Headfield. <laughs> Pre-burnt up Headfield? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pre-flofty uh, pre bangs. Yep, pre blow pre blown out throat. <laughs> wow. It's the Justice Tour that did friggin' yeah. do his throat in. But he, he still sounded good on the black album. After yeah, the black album, that was pretty much it. It was the black album tour that did him in. Yep. Yeah. Then he started Pink. going at that, that clear vocal. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, was wasn't it more like this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. All right, so Randy's got three. Rena says two. Dennis and Andy each have one. All right, yeah. horse race. I told Jay this wasn't gonna last more than ten minutes or like twenty minutes. <laughs> Sorry, Jay. Jay's gonna. Jay's so gonna. Funny. I'll so text funny. you when it's over, Jay. No, there kidding. you go. Yeah. All right, and so number number uh, number eight. Number eight. Yeah. Number eight. We got number Still eight. got time to make a sandwich real quick before we jump <laughs> back in to Gizmachi. Yeah. Um, so oh. we're on question number eight. Yep. Um, so Jay and Mike will appreciate this question. Huh? They might. Get ready. Kids, number eight. We're going there. What size is my neck? <laughs> this American heavy metal band from Orlando, Florida, formed in 1999 and released their debut oh, album, Jesus. Ember to Inferno, in 2003. Name the band. Oh, I know that band. Uh -huh. Who's going to Google it first? Hope somebody, Whoa, I know this straightening irons and hands. Hope somebody shit. knew it. <laughs> He's quick. He's in there already. Randy Price. Wow. Right on. And uh, Renus Pinkles right behind Nice, him. Randy. Nice, bro. And fun fact, they also shared a bus with them <laughs> on the Oxfest Yeah. Tour. Fun fact, it didn't start out very well with them. No, it didn't. Oh. I remembered the stories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you tell? Do you Everything's tell? fine now. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Everything's fine now, but it didn't start out good at all. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's move on to number nine. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> I want to hear about well, that. We, yeah, I've, yeah, I've, yeah. I've heard we'll talk, you mention we'll talk about in the that past in the a couple of years ago. I heard you mention Matt Heafy once or twice, Jay. Mm-hmm. I got no problem with him now. <laughs> so yeah, the hell you don't. They're, dude, they're, they're hard workers. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here's, I'm, I'm those dudes just are hard workers, around. man. The falls is opening they're, it up. It's they're still it doing up. it. They're still doing it. What the fuck are we doing? You know. Yeah. So. Anyhow, number nine. Let's move on to number nine. We'll talk about that later. Number nine. Number nine. Here we go. Number nine. Right. Number nine. All right. No. This might be the deciding one. So this is for the musicians. We keep the spirit of number nine alive here. So get ready, guys. You players coming at you. Sitting atop of flat style headstocks, these little widgets provide the correct amount of tension where the strings break over the nuts. Essentially, they increase the strings break angle and they provide sustain for open strings. What are we referring to here? There's two answers we'll take. Yeah, there's a couple Price, names. Wow. Metalworks, Andy Carson. I think Andy Carson was in first. Yeah. If I do he say was. so. Yep. Andy Cuss. Like there he is. Me. Yep. Right on, Andy. Back, Hang bro. on a second. Hang on a second. I'm oh, seeing, I'm okay, seeing wait. stuff above Andy wait, wait. Carson. No, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wow. yeah, you're right. I think I see this. Is this what yes. you see? Wow. Yes. So we will take oh, string retainers. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This 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 wow. trivia is tough because we got answers coming from everywhere. Well, yeah, we'll take that, so we'll, and that we'll, is correct. Sorry, Andy, we're going to take Renus. So now yeah, we got... He's, now, Randy, Randy's Randy's got four. Rena says three. Three. So. Yeah. yeah, for Christ's so, sake. <laughs> so, so. Yeah. Wow. What's the score be? That's his moment. He knew. He fucked up. Um, there's, <laughs> Randy's got four. Rena has three. Uh, and Dennis and Andy have one. So. Okay. All so right. it's down to the wire, boys. Down to the wire. It's down to the wire, yeah. boys. It's a tough one, man. Don't don't beat now, me. Now there's Randy. a possibility for a tie here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't think so. Wrong. Okay, so right. I don't know what we're going to do if it's knotted up. I don't know, man. Well, well Michael, okay. Michael, think, Michael, think of a uh, of a tiebreaker question. Oh, yeah? Uh, Can you put me on the spot like that? <laughs> well, you got time to think, think about it now. So you got you got about a minute and a half. Dude, I can't think at all anymore. Come on, man. <laughs> Use the balls. We'll figure Jeannie something and out. and Ellie are writing a tiebreaker as we oh. speak. <laughs> Thank How you. How did Mikey Balls get his name? That's a tiebreaker. I don't think he knows. Uh, I, don't <laughs> know. <laughs> I don't know. It was one of those. Drunken not really things. sure. <laughs> People started calling me balls. That's like the butt cheeks thing. It was all Jay's fault. No, I was Capio. Oh, anyway, oh, was it Capio? Anyway, yeah, we're gonna beautiful. we're gonna talk about that one too. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. I want to know the. Yeah, story we now. are. Can, can hardly Ready wait. Butt cheeks. Because right, I know go Jay's 10. got the answer. Ten. Let's go to number ten. We got, got another question. Yeah, I know. Still playing the game. All right, butt cheeks. <laughs> Notice that's the first time I've ever called you that. Yeah, you never call me that. Never have I called you that. Uh, All right, so question number 10 mm-hmm. always involves you knowing the show. So if you know it, you're going you're gonna to well, get it. Thanks, Jeannie. <laughs> you still want me a... You still want me a Freaking drumstick genie. Never gonna forget that. All right, number 10. Number 10. Number 10. All right, so good luck. Hey, Jay. You have the belt? <laughs> you have the fucking belt? I have the belt. It's Meg's. <laughs> it's Meg's. <laughs> anyway, number 10. We'll talk about that later. No, it's not We're just an album sh- event, Tom. We need to ask a question first. <laughs> We're going to 
show you a picture. Uh huh. And Just you're going to tell us who built this. I need a person's name first and last. Oh, yeah. You've seen me show this base who once built or it? twice. Who built it? If you watch the show, you know. Are those cracks like in the wood? It looks like a friggin' was made out of a tree, a raw tree. Yes. <laughs> I think it, think it was actually made out of uh, old Chinese oh, an old floor. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like a bridge or something. In a, a turn like of the a, century mansion. <laughs> Boat just dock in the up. water. No, oh. not Jeff Kiesel. He did not make it. Not no, Jeff Kiesel didn't make it. I didn't make it either, the cigar box dude. No, no not Neil Daly. No. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Daly. <laughs> Oh man! Walt no, Delbeck, Ben Tom with the answer of the night. <laughs> Walt ben, Delbeck. Walt Delbeck. And no, Walt it wasn't me. Walt Delbeck's <laughs> wife. Uh, All right. Some sweet get on you. Get on you. The Paul Reed Smith. <laughs> Texas Joe. No. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Sheehan. All right. <laughs> Who built that? A caveman. So it's apparent that the people Paul in the Bunyan. lead don't know the answer to this. Right, Brandon. right. Yeah, I see that. Getty Lee. You know. Who owns that base? Roy Hobbs. Yes. Roy, <laughs> Roy Hobbs. Wonder That's Boy. awesome. Wonder That's Boy. it. That is awesome. It's not Roy Hobbs. They might not know. Who they owns that base? have a lightning bolt on it. We, we, might, uh, we might have have to end it here and have a, have no winner who owns the base is that the dude who built it still owns it yes uh, okay yeah. never mind yeah. when did we talk noah. about noah when did we talk about it t was it on halenville or was it on show me your pick uh, mm. it was really it, close it, it was like last week it, i think if i say in, yeah I, it was it, like last it was last week yeah, you Man, I, I love this bass. How many times have you heard me say I love this bass? A lot. I love a lot this bass, right. Tony. Charles, how many times have I, have you heard me say it? A dozen. It wasn't Chris Squire, no. No. I, I have the perfect I have the perfect drop for this, but I, I I don't know if I could do it. What you got? Jay Turner, no. Chetty Licka. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to cut it off. We're going to cut no it. one knows We're it. We're going to cut We're it. We're going to cut then. it. Jay, we'll give you a guess, you and Mike. I don't fucking know. Mike Ball. Who built it? Uh, Billy Sheehan. Bob Vila. No, no, that's a no. good guess. Bob Vila. <laughs> so, so we're cutting it. We're going to cut it here. That's and, a good uh, We're going to so go, cut it. Randy's going to be the winner. Randy Price. Randy is Price our is the winner. For Dude, tonight. Awesome. Randy, you did it, bro. I know you've won here before. Resend me your address so it's at the top so, so I don't have to scroll no. for a half an hour. Yeah, thanks. Right on, bro. So put the answer up there. Lynn Ellsworth made this base. And I've shown this a few times in the past since Lynn was on the on the channel, uh, but I love that Paul. face. I was missing you. There he is. Who, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so Randy Price is the big winner for tonight. Randy. The Rock big Randy. winner, right on, brother. Right the on, bro. Sugar gets the chaos beer pick. Very cool. Right on, bro. Yeah. I'll send send you the latest stuff, Randy, that I know you don't have. You'll get the Ed DeBrill pick. You'll get a couple latest wow. of the Jay Turner and Mean Street. It's Randy Watson. Latest. Um, <laughs> sure. get, let me mention this, guys. Brendan, Ed. <clears throat> yeah. And Charles, um, our friend Jay Turner in Mean Street just played the opening slot of a multi-bill um, tribute band show in Leesburg, Virginia, at a at a arena, five thousand seat cool. arena, yeah, and they were That's the right. first 
in a group of four or five bands mm-hmm. and that's cool we'll hear all about that in the days and posts to come that's cool. jay sent me a bunch of texts but i hadn't since the show's been on but yeah not, we'll not talk more there. about that later not, not but later. jay thinking about you bro oh, no, not you, not i know you. you killed it i know i know not me <laughs> sometimes you gotta spell it out for the people all right so where yeah. were we i see wayno in here too good to see you bro Always good. good to see Wayne's Wayne. Confused. Yeah, Why are you confused, Wayne? Yeah. Is he confused? Because there's two chats. So, so Jay, let me. So, we go from the album. Mm-hmm. How did you guys mm-hmm. end up? I saw the original post years ago. How did you guys in, end up on Ozfest? I mean, it's a good question. Shit. We'll have to get some other people on the phone to answer that. Um, I don't know, right? We just got a phone call one day saying, "Hey, you guys are uh, you got the last slot on Ozfest or something, right?" Wasn't it basically how it was? Pretty much. I mean, I don't remember hearing the news. Like it's been that long. It's, it's crazy. I remember getting a phone <laughs> call, and then I remember at the time, blabbermouth. And all the music websites, not that there were that many back then, but there was a whole thing of like, they were, they were uh, announcing there's a surprise band that was going to be the last one to be announced on OzFest. And I, I'm assuming... Two surprise bands. Oh, it was two? Yeah. See? Mike, you're... you're yeah. Us, you're us and Wicked Wisdom. And people were like, who? People were pissed. Who? They were thinking, like, <laughs> when, you, when you talk about like all the bands are announced, you got, obviously you have... Uh, Ozzy and Black with Black Sabbath and Iron Maiden, they they were on that year, which was yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. And all the other great bands, and you're like surprise band, like who else <laughs> could it be? Like Wait, who? Holy shit, it's gonna be. And then holy it's like shit. his mock, and everyone's like, what? Who? Who the hell is that? That was so you, yeah. you guys yeah. had no idea. Just get a call out of the blue, and then it's time to go ride a bus and not do laundry and not eat, but. Yeah, I, I mean, mean we, we probably had a, quick. we probably had a couple months to, um, you know, prepare and stuff like that. But you know, we had never met Trivium or anything, and I remember just you know, even back then, buses were so goddamn expensive. And it's like well, I remember getting picked up mm-hmm. like outside our drummer's house, and I remember it was like the middle was it the middle of the night or it was really like one thirty in the morning or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it, it was it was late, and then. Like two guys, like one of the roadie guys, and I think one of the members of Trivium are out, like just like riding bikes. Like as soon as the bus stops, like they pop off, open the side compartment, and they're just riding their bikes around and like not saying anything and just like so cool on their fucking bikes. <laughs> like, uh, okay, yeah, that was awkward. Yeah, it was just weird. I was like, who the hell are these young dudes? How many <laughs> um, how many venues did you were on that that oh, tour? Oh shit. Do you remember? Uh, I mean, it's probably not, but you know. I mean, it I wasn't know. a ton of dates. I mean, it, we hit like every. Was it every major city? For the most part, yeah. Wasn't it like yeah. it was two months long? I mean, it? we didn't do like the Dakotas, you know, not, just the popular spots, yeah. really. Okay, yeah. and then and you guys did do Europe. Mm-hmm. You're, we did. Do we do Europe before or after Oscars? Before. We yeah. did Europe and left. We left Europe the day the album came out over there, and it was okay. like the dumbest shit ever. And it, it really <laughs> was just going there. We were on a pretty good tour with what was it, uh, Otep at the time? And yeah. We were like gonna swoop over, like we were gonna do like the California run, or we were in California. We were gonna come back towards the, the <clears throat> Northeast, and yep. we left the tour to go jump, you know, on a plane to go to Europe. And with it was like our album height. wasn't out yet. And we got we got on the big shows. I mean, we were on Rock'em Ring, Rock'em Park. That's you cool. know, like second, third stages and whatnot, but you know. But it's just, it's just weird when you when you look back at the timing. Like like Mike said, we were on a, a pretty good tour. We were I think we were main support, which means you go on before the headliner. Hmm. And um I mean it was it was it was going well. You know, we were we felt ourselves like picking up traction and, and making fans and things like that. And then it was like, well, we got to, we got to go over to Europe. And it literally, you know, if anybody was in a signed band or whatever, there's something called tour support. 
that your label, you know, you have to pay it back, but your label gives you X amount of money to help pay for things for going on tour, you know? Yeah. And we literally blew the entire, and it wasn't just because of like us spending, which we didn't do. It was all the expen expenses to paying for a band plus two people to come with us, right? We had to pay for, um, no, we just, it was just Mike Gaffon, right? It was just one yeah. person. But we and had then we had to pay for our driver. We had our driver. He was part of it a lot. Yeah, because think well, about well, it, right? You go over to Europe, you're used to driving on the, you know, right side of the road, right. left side of the car. And I'm thinking, like, is it really that hard? And I, Mike, remember, like, the first intersection we went through? I forget where we were. It was like, it was like oh, my like, God, we're going to get a freaking crash. <laughs> it was like one of those, like, huge intersections with, yeah, like, it was five, like a five roundabout. lanes merging. <laughs> driving through, like, whoa. It looks like you're just going into head-on traffic. That's crazy. <laughs> That's nuts, What the hell's going on? Cool. Yeah, just leaving yeah. the airport. <laughs> that was our first impression, like, immediately. There's a lot, yeah. There's a lot more to it than people think, you know. Think, well, oh, it was yeah, a twenty-four they're... hour drive from he was it he what was the airport? Heathrow. Heathrow is in Heathrow, London. Yeah. Our first yeah. show was in Italy, and I believe it was either twenty-one or twenty-four hours Holy after God. we landed. Oof, and like shit. we said, like we had one driver. We None literally drove all the way, like not st not stopping, no hotel. We were in a friggin' van all the way to the vet. We didn't get to sleep. It was, oh, it was rough. Yeah, there were like movie, like old movie theater seats. It was like ninety degree angle seats. So you're like oh, sitting straight up. And at one point, this... we're on the autobahn. Remember that shit? Yeah, man. We saw an accident on the autobahn. The guy like flew past us with like the silver Mercedes, like so fast. And then like we saw it like wow. totaled. Then we oh, drove dude. past it later on. It was it was yep. crazy. Wow, that's crazy, man. But. But that's the seats, like, you know, like in a bus, how you could like dip down the seat and you stick your knees on the seat in front of you, get kind of yeah. comfortable and you like pass out on yourself. Like it, it was too far away. So you couldn't even do that. <laughs> yeah, none you of that. Sleep shit. on each other. I was like on Jimmy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> come on, Mike. <laughs> yeah. We got pictures of us inside the bus. Those are good ones, too. Yep. It looks like we're in a movie theater. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> I think the interior of that was like the red, uh, Whatever the hell material I call like a movie theater. Some velvet the seats, yeah. That's funny. So there was some times where you guys were out in the parking lot, like pretty much the third stage, the park. That's pretty much where the third stage was. What Austin? Nah, we we, we, yeah. we were in like the, like a pavilion, kind of like a tent. It was like the second stage. We weren't like oh okay. It wasn't, it wasn't parking lot style, but yeah, we we were on the second stages, but it was. Yeah, you know, we, we went on early a lot, and it wasn't really a lot of people. Yeah, well, about what time like, we saw like some of the other bands on the second stage play later in the day, and there was yeah. packed in there, and he's kicking up dirt and the whole thing. Right. So you were like early afternoon kind of. Yeah, we got so really time slot. Went on like three or four o'clock, I think I remember. Okay. Something like that. I I used to look when I went to Ozfest. I used to look at the uh, itinerary and say, "Yeah, we're gonna hang out in the parking lot for a while. Keep <laughs> keep tailgating. We'll yeah. go in during this band." Oh, yeah. on Ozfest, the latest we yeah, went on, I think, was one o'clock. Oh, so you were we didn't go, pretty we early. We didn't ever go on later than one. That was the latest slot. And it was Does like because there was there was a couple. I mean, there was headliners. On there was three bands, one. I think, that got their, that had the slot that didn't move. I think it was Mastodon, Rob Zombie, and Kill Switch Engage. They were locked yep. in. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And all the other bands rotated. Okay. Yeah, so in the New Jersey show, I believe, which was considered our hometown show, that was at 1 o'clock, and that was the hottest day in, like, 20 years or something. Yeah, it was, like, oh, 102 shit. and humid. It was oh, it was brutal that day. Wow. Yep. And then the Florida show, I think, that might have been the one where we played the earliest. That was, like, what was it, like, 9.30? Oh, yeah, we played, it, was, it was, like, two or three times we played the first slot, and literally we'd go on the stage, like, 9.30 in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Florida, Florida wow. time. Jeez. Like we okay. just we'd have breakfast. Like we get up dumb early, go get breakfast, and I'm like, we got to go on stage. I'm like warming up, and my voice is still like sleep style. <laughs> yeah, it was, just not it was sleep at that point. Shit. Stay up all night, then play, then go to bed. I blew my oh. voice out. What third show in or first show? First show, I went like I guess it was nerves. We did a sound check. I went to sing, and like I felt like my voice like whoa. And then I, like towards the end of the song, I was like, like it was like already shot. And then I went on that day, and I remember like when we were in front of people, and like I went to sing, and like, my voice was tore up. It was just like <laughs> nerves. Wow. Yeah. Didn't war I, I warmed up, but it didn't matter. It was nerves. And then like I didn't get my voice back until like what, five, six, seven shows in. Oh, 
shit. Then I had it for the rest of the tour, Whoa. and then I was all right. But that, that was bad. That was... Whoa. Terrible. That's terrible, bro. Every well, time I went to sing, it was just like, ah, 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 like cracking. <laughs> it, was, it was awful. <laughs> See, that's another thing to worry about. I mean, any, any musicians out there, you know, you're always... You just have those nerves before you go on, and a lot of them are unwarranted. But, you know, you have all this gear, you know, and, and think about it, too, is like these shows are outside and they're morning to early afternoon is when you're going on. Right. So yeah. anybody that plays guitar out there, you know what weather change does to a oh, yeah. to an instrument, to a guitar. And I remember one show. It was it was the might have been the. There was a bunch of shows where well, Will Smith. Good night, Andy. Good night, Andy. Where Don't Will Smith was uh, was there hanging out with Jada and and Wicked Wisdom, and, and like it might. Flew I don't know in. If it was, yeah, I don't know if it was the California. I don't think it was the California show. I forget where it was, but he, I remember he came it was, to the he came to the Chicago one, Jay. I remember him flying because he flew in, uh-huh. watched his, her set, and then fucking left. <laughs> so, yeah, I remember that's, that. That's pretty much what he did. But I because we played, I think right after them, unless. You know, we were yeah. playing first or something like that. That's but basically right. we they'd play and then we'd go up. So I remember one show, I'm standing backstage and it started to get hot. And you know, I'm sitting there and you know, Mike and I, our guitars rarely went out of tune. Like it was one of those things where these guitars are so good, they rarely went out of tune, you know. And I just remember tuning the guitar and Will Smith is standing right next to me, and we're just kind of like I don't even I don't even want to call it small talk. It was like this dumbest shit. But I'm starting to get nervous. I'm like <laughs> We got to go on like three minutes and my guitar is just being a bitch. And I was just sitting there like trying to be cool with Will Smith standing next to me. <laughs> and my fucking guitar won't stay in tune. I was like, son of a bitch. Listen, oh, Fresh Prince. Stay in tune, you know, like, this guy sucks. Yeah, it's one of my, yeah. one of my top memories. <laughs> you know, when, I was on stage standing on the side. Will Smith comes up on the stage and he's like kind of looking around. Everyone's looking at him like, oh, they, right away they notice him. And then he looks over and he sees me. We met him previously on that OTEP tour. Yeah. They came out with, he came out with Jada and like they hung out with OTEP and then we met them. We took some photos with them and everything. But he saw me, like he recognized me and he came over and said, what's up to me? He gave me a handshake and everything. Like out of all the people, he's like, I know that guy. Nice. And I was like, it was crazy. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Well, I'm nice that you met him then and not now. He didn't punch you. have a different. You might be a little standoffish. <laughs> he came over and instead of a handshake, just fucking. Yeah, you might. You know, he might uh, walk hey, out up, on Mike? stage. Never know. <laughs> but, but as, as far as Ozfest, I mean, I wish every hardworking musician got got to experience a summer like that because it really was like. It was just awesome. Like, you know, you felt like something, you felt a part of something that was just, you know, as a metal fan, like Ozfest was the pinnacle of like a yeah. traveling tour. It was, we got Ozfest, holy shit. It was a you circus, know? man. Yeah. Right? It, it was like a freaking boot camp. Like just waiting to go on stage. You literally boot have camp. what, ten, wait, like 10 minutes to set up. They're pushing everything out. And when like, I'm just like, a, a lot of times I was having technical was difficulties minutes. with my equipment. A 15 minute set with a five minute. Uh, change over. Yeah, it was they, five minutes. Like, like we were like, on risers, though. You could wheel the shit out. Yeah, or not? You know, like the yeah. They had the dr- like three drummers on stage. The one that was right. playing and two ready to go behind the oh, stage. Man. Five yeah. minutes. Wow. Yeah, and they wow. had you know, everybody's back line was there, so the band playing, you know, so they would go through. But again, right. That five minutes, you don't have time if shit happens. And I remember was at the Connecticut show, Mike. Your yeah, shit. like I had a bad patch. Like I had a rack set up and everything, and I had like a three foot patch cord that was bad and it was like on its way out it was intermittent it would work sometimes and then like cre- like my the text ran over and they started wiggling it and they got it to go and it stayed for the rest of the show but then we never changed it out and i remember like it went at one show and i literally my guitar was out for the whole set like it went out like in the mid- like the beginning of the first song yeah. i never got it back so Which i'm up there playing that was- an air guitar the whole time <laughs> Which is funny because a lot of people said that was our best show. I, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. My favorite part, oh, and again, man. you know, sometimes at the time you're thinking, oh, my God, this is the worst thing that could possibly happen right now. But when we talk about this as a band, it, it, it's almost like I'm, I'm happy it happened the way it did because at one point, Mike, you know, your guitar wasn't working, but you still had the role of singing. And so you couldn't just – Fuck it. I'm, I'm just... Can't I have just to, walk off. Have, yeah, you can't just yeah. try to fix your stuff. You have to still sing. So at one point, what's, what's, what's my favorite part of the whole thing? 
oh, when I walk up to the mic and like I, the monitors weren't even working. This is what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, the monitors weren't working. I went up and I'm like, I can't even hear myself. Is the mic even on? So I'm like, I go up and I start saying, can anyone hear me? I was like, anyone at all? And I'm like, looking around. I look, I see these two guys over on the friggin' the, the front and they're just looking over at me and they're like, <laughs> like we, we hear you, dude. And I was just like, and I was just like, this fucking sucks. Oh, man. It was the oh, worst. Oh, shit. Yep. So I'm, after that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to pretend to play guitar and I'm just going to kind of muscle through this. Cause like, what am I going to do? Stand around, like trying to, like, like fiddling around with my gear the whole time. Like, no one was helping me. No one was, you know, knew what was wrong. Yeah, and that's, and that's I remember cool. we we sorted it out the next morning. We got we got up early, and like plugged all my stuff in, and we ended up finding a bad patch board. And that was Mark Lewis, by the way. That was yeah. helping me that morning. He went nice. on to be a big producer. Yeah, he's the man now. Thanks, Mark. Nice. So Brandon, awesome. so yeah. so you went out in '05 and met up with Jay. Yeah, it was and not saw even a few of those dates. It wasn't the, planned. It wasn't planned at all. It was. Meg had a conference out there in Chicago, and I just happened to go with her. Made it like a family trip, and what we were talking about earlier, we, Jay and I must have been texting at the at some point. I think I was following the tour, you know, because you're like, "Yeah, man, having a good time." Blah blah blah. I'm like, uh, "I'm like, I'm in Chicago." He goes, "Hey, man, so am I." <laughs> He's like, "The show is happening," you know. Yeah. So, uh, and and yeah, so I I ended up showing up there. He got me in. Uh, you know, a little VIP Got pass. pass. Backstage pass. <laughs> Get in there, got on the stage. I watched from behind the stage. It was kind of cool. Um, it was a lot of fun. That's the only That's the only date that I saw because I was in Chicago. But, you know, we hung out for the day because you played early. I guess you did play around yeah, one. Yeah, that one we played kind of early. So, that, yeah, that kind of sucked. It, it does because it's during yeah. the day and people are like, I mean, the crowd's not really. Yeah, nobody, they're, nobody they're all sleeping. And yeah, nobody's yeah. looped up, you know? No, no. <laughs> But it was cool though, because af after the set, you guys had like a little the table where you could sign stuff. There was a decent amount of people there, which was nice, yeah. you know. So that was kind of cool. Um, that was an and awesome experience. And then you, didn't you didn't you go off and watch some of the other bands and stuff like I that? I did. I, I went and I actually I get uh, um, Rob Zombie. You. Rob Zombie was doing a, a radio <laughs> interview, like somewhere. Cause I guess I don't remember what you guys were doing. You was like you were. I think you were doing like the signing stuff, and so I went and I, and I got to meet Rob, and that was before I. That was before John Five, I think. Right? I don't think he was. No, he was. He was there. He was there. So but okay, I didn't so meet you him. got to meet John Five. I didn't meet him there. Oh, See, I, okay. I, that's the weird part. Oh, no, I didn't no, meet him. Rob Zombie. I meant Rob Zombie. Yeah, I met Rob. Because that's I, didn't meet John. I don't think I don't think Mike and I met Rob Zombie. Yeah, no. I met Rob after he did the uh, the radio interview. He was cool. Um, but it was only him, wasn't like the rest of the bands. That's why I didn't meet John Five until like ten years later. You know, well, so. dude, Rob Zombie. You know, it's kind of yeah. looking back. I think about it. It's like you'd think that the biggest artist on the set, you know, headlining the second stage. Yeah. You know, you want to mingle a little bit, say hi to the younger bands, some of the up and coming bands, like uh, Zach Wild did, right, Mike? Remember that? We were playing. I think it was Texas. And we were rolling. Yeah, Zach Wild was actually really cool. Came over. Yeah, had, he, came up with, he gave I us all we're, beers. We were hanging out by cool. the trailer. It was awesome. Yeah, we were hanging out by the trailer. So he just walked up with a six pack and he's like, yep. you know, just walked up and we literally shot the shit while we drank our beer as soon as the beer was done. He's like, all right, nice meeting you guys. Good luck with everything and uh, go fuck yourselves. And he, and he left, you know, but he was cool as shit. Where Rob Zombie, again, he might be a nice guy, but he didn't come around. He basically showed up played and then and then he would split unless he had i'm sure a radio appearance or interviews yeah and i mean like those, i don't know a lot of a lot of the those guys were they're, they're booked like the whole time like every minute is booked you know yeah but you think you'd, like you'd come but and just say you hi think you would that. come and say hi yeah i mean at least the second stage you know yep. you're on the second stage like come talk to your dudes you know mm -hmm. yeah and sharon come by and say hi yeah, she did. And then she uh, almost threw some people off because remember that was <laughs> a, a oh, no. uh, bunch of bands or people from different bands stole the golf carts. Oh, yeah, I've heard them. this. So, yeah. so, so how often <laughs> did in the day to day, Jay, did you see Sharon unless something Just got one mad time as hell before. because of the golf carts and everybody's kicked off the door? Yeah, it was it was wrong. literally I mean, if you if there wasn't a big like to do like that was where she came and had all the second stage bands come into a fucking circle 
and she basically reamed everybody and said, if that shit happens again, whoever the fuck is involved, you're, you're off. Your band is gone. Um, and then I think I saw her once again in the uh, um, catering area with uh, I saw Ozzy there and I saw Slash. And um, yeah. but again, but, everybody's like, well, did you guys say, you know, like we at the time, I don't know how Mike feels, but, you know, we were still I, I didn't feel like we really belonged yet type of thing. I felt like we were still earning our stripes, whatever the hell the term might yeah. be. So I always found it hard to kind of go up to these, you know, huge rock stars and be like, introduce myself. I'm like, they don't give a fuck who I am. Why? Yeah, so we no. kind of saw them and we were just kind of be like, oh shit, there's fucking yeah. Slash. And then we, you know, yeah. a bunch yeah. of glancing over kind of thing, but we didn't go over and say nothing. Yeah, don't want to yeah, fans. I don't know what we're going to say. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? We're a big fan. Hey, Slash, nice hat. <laughs> you probably would have been like, hey, thanks, and cool enough, you know, but like, you know. It's, yeah. it's hard. I don't you want to meet your your heroes and idols. You know, I had a chance to meet some rock stars that like I'm really into, and like I just uh, I, I couldn't bring myself to go over. And I was standing right next to Devin Townsend once, and like Chino and Europe from Deftones, hmm. and like wow. I, I had an opportunity to go up and say something, and I just I couldn't bring myself to do it. Like, what if he's a dick? What if he's like he says something that I just turns me off and rubs me wrong? I won't like his music anymore. Well, <laughs> you know, speaking of Mashuga, Tony. Um, yeah, yeah, you don't know what this. We were playing. What was it? It was that that show wasn't in. It was in Rock and Ring. Rock and Ring. So we, after, I'll set it up and then you can you can take it home. But um, <laughs> that one, there's one show we played. It was a it was huge festival, right? So we were on like the second, maybe might even have been third stage that day. Who the hell knows? But Mashuga was one of the headlining acts for that for that show. And earlier in the day, we were having breakfast or lunch with two or three of the guys from Meshuggah, like uh, Martin, um, Thomas, and, and, uh, uh, Fred. and even, even Frederick came down. And, you know, he was not as, as uh, engaging, but, you know, he's awesome, you know, nonetheless. So, you know, we had played with those guys at the Chance in Poughkeepsie a couple years before that. So anyway, they have this huge area, um, like a tented area set up for all the bands and VIP. So it's not like anybody's just walking around. This is after the whole show is over, right? Yeah, so all the, the bands, VIP section, basically. Yeah, yeah, basically VIP section. So all the bands are hanging out, you know, Shadows Falls there, you know, some other cool bands and stuff like that. So the guys from Mashuga come down. So Balls does what he just talked about. <laughs> yeah, when, like with Mashuga, it's more of like, I look at them more of like a peers, not so much like, you know, like big rock stars thing. So I was like, oh, I'll say what's up to them. So I saw Jens Kidman, the singer, and I went over to him and I was just like, hey, I just went with sugar and like to him. And I was just like, big fan. He turned around and looked at me. I was like, big fan. And he just goes, fuck that. And he just turns around. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, and he was man. like, you know, he, he looked like he was a little sauced or maybe he wasn't. I think he was just being like, you know, fuck that. You know, I, I'm I'm not mm. I'm in this tent. It's supposed to be this shit not going on. And we got a fanboy over here. I don't know what it was, but yeah, but it's not like I stopped liking with sugar, you know, because I didn't really hold him up on the pedestal like that anyway. So well, no, what would happen? I I kind of remember what happened. Like you almost came over to the rest of us with like your tail between your legs, and you told us what happened, and we were like, "That's fucking awesome." <laughs> <laughs> It's like a different experience because it was Mashuga, you know. It's like, yeah, he's like, oh, he basically awesome. just, he just said fuck that when I said you know, I'm a big fan of him. <laughs> it's like, I guess whatever. Uh, uh, <laughs> hey, I, I have got a question for you guys. Um, so typically, after your set was done, did you guys hang out with other bands and just party, or did you actually like watch the show for certain people or? Yeah. We watched, especially Ozfest. We watched bands like side stage, you know, yeah. and like you know some bands we wanted to check out. But as far as like partying with the other bands, not not really. No, yeah. we we didn't. We partied with ourselves, if anything. We just like yeah. goofed around and we had our own camaraderie and like we really didn't, you know, hang out with other bands. We, we were we felt like we didn't really belong in a sense. You know, okay. we were a young band, and all of a sudden, we're getting like some of these accolades, I guess you could say. Like, yeah. And it was like, a, it, we just didn't really feel like we belonged. And then we find out that like Mastodon actually really liked us because we they felt like we weren't like fitting the traditional mold of metal at the time. And I think they kind of like liked that about us. Okay. 
but like mm-hmm. Mastodon like liked us, but like mm-hmm. they didn't, you know, they, I remember Troy coming over and having, you know, when Trivium, <laughs> that was funny. They left. <laughs> oh, yeah. We were on Ozfest and they had some other shows, so they left. And then we had the bus to ourselves that night. And I guess, you know, Trivium's not, uh, Mastodon's a huge fan of Trivium. And then like, they, they can't like, I guess Troy got wind that they weren't going to be on the bus that night. And they came over immediately at a bottle of wine. <laughs> and they shot the shit with us, like for getting for most of the night. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. It was really so, cool. Was there a, a competition? Did you feel that at all? Uh, well, with Trivium? With, with any of the bands that were on the second stage. I don't know if it was a competition. I, th- I felt yeah. it was more of like trying to prove ourselves that we belonged. That's okay. kind of yeah. what it was for me, at least. I mean, you know, especially when you think of you know a lot of the other bands i mean everybody thinks they're unique but when yeah you know, i think at the time we were we kind of felt like is this is our shit kind of you know is everybody digging what we're doing you know is it, is it are you wasn't different like, yeah yeah you know they dug it so did every yeah. did every band do every uh every you know step of the tour or or did some like come off and go on mastodon you know I mean? got kicked off one show because um Brett, right? Yeah. Brent, 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 uh, Brent got friggin' like wasted on like shrooms or acid or something like oh, that, no. and he like he like friggin' like destroyed some bathroom or something like did, that. No, well, back to Rob Zombie. So remember, I mentioned earlier, guys, with the bathrooms and the showers and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. They had a trailer for the all the second stage bands to use, whether it's you know for the showers and stuff. Right. Well, Rob Zombie had his own, so he had his own trailer with the showers and everything oh. that he needed. But remember what I said about he would come, play and leave. So he never used it. So one day, like like Mike said, he got Brent got messed up and destroyed the trailer. Like ripped the <laughs> the guardrail going up the stairs into it, and oh, God man. knows what on the inside. Oh, wow. And uh, so the next, it's funny because the next show, the next night or next day, I should say, everybody got to play an extra song. <laughs> so we're like, shit, yeah, everybody gets to play an extra track. So that was cool. Yeah, excellent. Wow, but um, as far as that, I think for the most part, right? Every band, you know, there was a couple shows where they had another band play. Like Slipknot played one of the dates. Okay. Um, speaking of Slash, the show he was there, uh, Velvet Revolver played one of the one night. Yeah. Yep. Oh, very cool. Yeah, they played in Europe, right? Yep. I remember yeah. we were on a. I felt like we saw a show of Velvet Revolver played mm-hmm. in Europe. I think we were yeah. involved on that show. Yeah. Yeah. Did the lineup change between Europe and America, or did was it basically the same? Or that was different. It was different. And we only okay. played a couple Ozfest dates over there, right? Yeah. Is that how it went? Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Hmm. Cool. Hope we're not skipping over anybody. Like when you ask a question, I know Balls and I have a tendency to. Branch off and go no, no, no. This is great. No, this is stuff people don't know. You know? What, what's the crowds? Well, what's music like in Europe when you walk out on a stage compared to here in the states? Well, they have the they have different plugs, right? They don't have the ground and the two prong, and it's like a different plug over there. <laughs> I remember that was like a thing. We had the rent. We had the rent equipment, right? We didn't even use our own gear. All we had was our uh, our floorboards or whatever I think it was, and our guitars. And then we ended yeah. up having to borrow other amps. We used other amps. I think our drummer used a different drum kit. I think he didn't he play like Shadows Falls drummer's kit one day. I don't remember. I know he had he brought his cymbals and his and his uh, kick drum pedal. And he was just like, oh, there's kick. There's too much throw in this kick pedal. And like he, I remember he had like a whole bunch of complaints about it because you're so you're used to playing your shit you know especially oh, with yeah. drums yeah. Yeah. yeah so That's stuff weird. like that was kind well, of weird over in europe the crowds i think i think in europe they're just less trendy um you know, over there that's my mother-in-law by the way all of your parents were proud of you guys it was yeah. we we tortured the hatchers um <laughs> for over 10 years we played in their basement in their house Blasting. And finally, finally, and you're getting them out of here. And we yeah. were fucking loud. I we remember a couple loud. times I went up to use the bathroom, and those guys were all, the rest of them were playing downstairs, and I heard it from upstairs. I was like, wow, this is what it sounds like when we play up here. I like felt their pain. <laughs> shit. That was when I first, I was like, holy shit, they're letting us right. do this? This is pretty wild. So, yeah. Jay, here's a question. So, thank you so much for that. <laughs> so, so, Jay was, did you meet, uh, Jenny because of Jimmy or was yeah. Jimmy because of Jenny? Jeannie. Okay. Um, Jimmy first. Um, okay. 
what's funny is I'll try to make this fast. Probably when I was about, <clears throat> I'm thinking 14 or 15, probably 15, when I started playing guitar, my best friend Anthony, who was the original drummer of, uh, <laughs> of Kizmachi, <laughs> I remember my brother was in high school and he, one of his friends that he was in like drum core with or whatever the hell it was, his name was Matt DeLuca, right? Mm -hmm. I remember him coming over one day and I told him, oh, I'm in a band now. I got, you know, my friend, my best friend, Anthony, he's like, dude, best friends and bands never work. He's like, I'm giving lessons to this kid, Jimmy Hatcher. He's young, but I, he's, he's, he's amazing. And he blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. Right. Well, fast forward a couple of years, we're starting to have some issues with, you know, our drummer, Anthony starting to um, want to hang out with his girlfriend more than he wants to have band practice. Uh -huh. So I forget how we knew of Jimmy. Maybe uh, I forget how this, how that happened, but all of a sudden I was like, let's, uh, Oh, I know what it was. We had a, a makeshift singer at the time and he was friends with Jimmy and he was just like, Hey, why don't I'll, I'll give Jimmy Hatcher a call. I'm like, well, wait a minute. I remember hearing that name. And then soon after that, we get him in the band. And then a few years after that, next thing you know, uh, his uh, little sister. I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> uh oh, man, he's gonna be dumb filming my own band. You know, because little sister. Yeah, yeah. The, the the Rob in the Cradle style at the time, because uh, you know how it is when you're younger. You know, like if you have an age gap, it's like, uh oh, that's kind of like look frowned upon. You get older, it doesn't matter so much. But you know, hey, you, guys, look, get a, you guys get a nice gap. <laughs> a nice gap. <laughs> that's boss. That's boss. Uh, that's yep. but no i that's mean if you funny. think about it right if i didn't play guitar or jimmy didn't play drums yeah you never. Know? You, that's, yeah. or my brother for that matter if he didn't play drums and he wouldn't have been hanging right. out with that dude right yeah that's so. right yeah or you didn't rob the cradle that's, that's the way things the way things work out man <laughs> right yeah yeah, we're, we're all adults here now. Of the same thing when he was young, you know, like oh, we have a four-year gap when you're in your early twenties or whatever. It's like yeah, yeah. Yep. So, so how you, much you, you get you get messed with? <laughs> how, how how much do you think the uh, Ozfest really helped you guys? I mean, was it like did you notice like a huge uptick in uh, album sales and all that stuff after you played? Not the did first it? day, because remember, Mike, the first Ozfest date. You know, they had a, a bunch of uh, whatever set up, merch stations set up with everybody's, you know, CDs for sale and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, well, I remember, like, after we played or whatever it was, we kind of walked over to see everything, like, and they had our CD on sale for $20. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. It was like, what is going on? Everybody else was like 10 bucks or 12 bucks, and they had ours for, like, it was a like 19 20? or $20. And it was like, what is this better? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, it was just—it just didn't make any sense. I remember Sean, our singer at the time, like losing his fucking mind, calling yeah, he, up. You know, the wow. record. He had a bit of a temper, to say the least, and he didn't get no, he, he'd walk over and he'd, he'd want he'd want to kill people, and he, he would oh, do it too. He was. He doesn't look like animal. a mad guy. Come on. <laughs> yeah, he's well, a freaking nut. So, but no, I mean, so, uh, as far as that, it kind of put us on the map for I think a lot of metal fans, you know, that, that yeah. didn't know about us and everything. And obviously, the Slipknot connection yep. it helped. It helped and it hurt that it helped. as well at the same time. Some people looked at it as like, you know, they didn't want a Slipknot clone, even though we were nothing like them. No, but just some people no, instantly kind of put you in that category for no reason, and it's like yeah, baby well, Slipknot kind of shit. Yeah. Well, I saw them on second stage, you know, back when they first started. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of bands, you know, you got, you got Palmer 5000, yeah, you got Head PE, you got uh, Disturbed, uh, Slipknot, yeah. obviously, Cold Chamber, uh, Typo Negative, Lacuna yeah. Coil, Kill Switch Engage, I mean, there's a shitload of bands that I saw on the second stage, I was like, holy shit, these guys are good. Hey, Mike, you know, speaking, and, of, speaking of Head PE, wasn't, wasn't our first, like, real tour with Head PE, wasn't it? Was it? I think so. I think so too. And I remember one of the shows. It was I think it was Maine or something like that. It was January, well, or February. It was cold. our first real tour was uh, Mushroom Head in two thousand four, like early two thousand four. Remember? Yeah, but I'm saying like after we kind of got signed and did the record and stuff. Yeah, like that. you're right. It was kind of our first one. And I remember we were playing in um. And any anybody that's kind of toured and, and played shows in certain places you might know what i'm talking about like we played the show 
and it was at a pool hall, and I th I'm pretty sure it was Maine. It was cold. It should, you know, any any guitar player out there, it's like you know what it is to kind of try to warm your hands your when you're fingers. you know yeah. playing. It's, you know, three degrees outside, or whatever the hell it was. Yeah, when you're loading in, you know, all bundled up. Yeah. Yep, and any little pinch of your finger. Oh, I can't play guitar tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I remember we, we and it was we walk into the venue, and there was this huge like two sets of stairs just going down. There was this huge pool hall, right? And we're like, okay, well, where the hell is like where is where do the bands play? Where is every where's the show gonna happen? So you go down the hall, the main hallway to the right, and there's this room, and it felt like as narrow as the room I'm in right now. It was a long, narrow room. Do you remember that one, Mike? With the one, yeah, remember when man, Gilmore that, got that was wild. Dude. Like it was like low ceilings, the whole nine. Like it was like so, like it was like a real long, narrow room. And then and it was, like where and that's. I was like, that's the stage. It was literally like a like a foot high, <laughs> yeah. and like it was small. And I'm like, we're ten by get ten on that with all these bands' back lines. I think that one of those. That was one of those nights where we like said, yo, why don't we just share amps? Save yeah, a little, yeah. like save save, save a little room time. on the stage. Yeah, you know, yeah. like we did that a couple of times. Especially we got really small stages. Like we like use somebody else's amps and fuck it, just cabinets yeah. really. Yeah, but I just remember wow. walking in there thinking this is going to be the worst show. You know, no one's going to want to play. And then all of a sudden, like the doors open, it was earmuff to earmuff in that goddamn room. And I, Mike, remember when we went on? Friggin' like people, it was so packed. People were like had their like feet up on the stage because it was like you're, you're literally playing like this far away from somebody right in front of you and it was the shit and that was the show remember sean not, knocked me into jimmy's drum kit because it was yeah because sean, sean was the type he was just so big and klutzy on stage that he would just like kind of be banging around and he would just kind of rock like a, a certain way and then like just he nudged jay and like jay just went backwards into friggin jimmy's drum set Oh, was it shit. Jimmy was on that tour, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Not even he, he, you just see Jay just like with his face like <laughs> like just falling onto his symbols. It, it was too funny. Jay Dude, I'll never faces. forget that. You think your life is over when you're you're gonna get impaled by a symbol sta uh, arm or something. Yeah, he's getting <laughs> you know? the freaking the worst thing is gonna happen to you. Oh, yep. man. Let me ask you guys this. So so you're out on tour. You only have so much gear as a young band. Was there, what did you do with all the bands? Did you, like on OzFest, if something goes wrong, did you have to borrow a head from this fella or this from that guy or that much of that going on? Oh, nah, like, like I said, I had that technical difficulty with my uh, my one patch cord, but no we sorted that out. No yeah, nobody seemed calls. to want to help. <laughs> I don't yeah, know, I yeah. I used two cabinets on Ozfest. We, we did, did two 412 cabinets, and for pretty much every other place besides that, we only used one uh, 412 each. Mm -hmm. Jay had the uh, the traditional. I had the standard Mesa cabinets. I think guitar players. I mean, if something really did break, if especially, I mean, Ozfest is kind of different because it's it's such a well oiled, fast machine where you don't have time to like. You get yeah. up on stage, you got to play. You don't have time to fiddle and like do my my amps not working can i borrow yours like it's like tough shit you ain't playing yeah but yeah. i mean if you're you know if you're on a, sh a a tour with you know the same two or three or four bands there there ends up being that camaraderie where if like something you know like a drummer like dude my china broke last night can i borrow yours until mine you know gets shipped in or whatever the hell it is so there's always unless unless the bands you know do you ever hear of a band we we were on ozfest with them uh bury your dead well mm -hmm. I'm a huge proponent of people saying thank you, right? Sure. Please, thank you, whatever, right? So yeah. right. the the big dude in Bury Your Dead who uh, – and funny enough, he's in jail now. <laughs> but I remember they were playing an off date on OzFest, and I remember we were hanging out, and I forget what it was. I think he's – I don't know if something happened to his cabinet. You know, his 4 by 12 was it? whatever the hell it was. So I offered mine up. I was like – Dude, use mine, you know, whatever. I'll go in the trailer, we'll get it for you. Dude, he never said, like, thank you or nothing. And oh, he was shit. such a big dude, and I knew he was a, a, a bad mofo. I was like, I'm not even going to say, like, you're welcome, you know. You pull that <laughs> shit. <laughs> nope. Nope, you can have it, you know. No sarcasm. <laughs> no. Yeah. no. But he's in jail now, so, uh, you know, goes around, comes around. Because he's a, a guitarist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah.
because you didn't say thank you. Now he's got thank you tattooed on his finger. Yeah. You know? What a tear drop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he funny. gets out Monday morning. I uh, hope he doesn't see this video. Yeah, he's going to get out. <laughs> I'm going to where Jay live. I know where he live. <laughs> Give him Mike's address. No. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Nah, that's cool, man. Those stories are great. And I'm sure you guys, you know, are bringing back some memories when you're thinking about it. You know, like, yeah, this was fun. Yeah, I haven't thought about some of this stuff in a minute. Yeah. 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 Guys, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to go to the men's room real quick. Hey, Um, me too. When I get back, (laughs) we're going to do a unboxing. And yes. then we're ultimately going to talk about the the latest uh, no. Gizmachi album from 2021. That's I'll be right movement. back, guys. Carry on. Uh, we'll be right back, too. Uh, hey, hey, Jay, here's a question in the, uh, in the chat for you. 2001 RG7 27 string for a thousand bucks. You can get uh, the 7.6 uh, 20s for... Um... Probably around that same price. No, I think the seven four twenty is that one that that doesn't have the a trem, right? Isn't that just the the hardtail version of the same guitar, know. literally? Hmm. But I would say, um, I would say that's a little, a little pricey, pricey for that. A little, little steep. Yeah. A little steep for that. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions? No, nothing. Uh. Yeah, all right. So, oh, hey, Monique. About time, Ed. What, what what's the deal, Ed? What's the deal with your what? niece? What I do? No, your niece my just cousin, showed up you mean? now. Cousin, my cousin, niece, sister, whatever, relative. <laughs> uh, no. So, um, I'm an let, e- let, let, I want to talk. Let's. I want. I do want to talk about that. That uh, your first guitar, Jay. That I've been trying to get back for like three, four years now. <laughs> yeah, man. Shit. So. Yeah, so Jay sold his guitar, which or sold it to a guy we worked with. He bought like everything because he bought my four wheeler. He bought Jay's guitar, and then he bought some other stuff. This guy would just buy everything we had, and <laughs> and he he never played it. And I saw him. How long really? ago was that? It was a couple years ago. At I least got, two years ago. It was maybe more than that because you were. I think you were ago. still doing Johnny. Beats, yeah, it was, so it was yeah, more than maybe that. Three, maybe three, three and a half years yeah, ago. Yeah. So and, and I'm like. I forget what we were talking about it, and I it was like around Christmas time, and I think you guys were talking about you know guitars that you wish you didn't get rid of or sell, and yep. you were talking about that. And I'm like, oh, and it was like the day after I I saw this guy at a Seven Eleven. I'm like, yo, no shit, dude. I'm like, uh, you still got Jay's guitar? He wants it back. <laughs> he goes, yeah, I got it somewhere. So he gave me his information, and uh, I think I sent it to you, Jay. But then you called him, didn't answer. <laughs> You know, or, no, I, I think, oh, you called. Oh, was his dad answer or somebody? Yeah, like, dad answered. Said he was. Yeah. I was like, shit, this yeah. is weird. I haven't seen the guy in almost twenty years, and I'm right. gonna call him and ask him if he has a guitar, <laughs> Can I have my guitar back. So what? What was that first guitar? Well, my first. I mean, I had a white harmony piece of shit guitar that my my parents got me for my. I think it was my fourteenth birthday. It, was, it wasn't that one. No, it wasn't that one. Then I had oh. a red, um, like Mexican Fender Strat that uh, okay. my was brother's. That girlfriend at the time his her father played guitar so yeah he got me a deal on that but my first like real good guitar was an ibanez rg 760 1991 so it was the first year with the low pro and it had it was single single hum and um you know black with the shark tooth inlays and it was just wow i I learned like i i definitely learned how to play guitar on that guitar on that one yeah and that's um, the one the guy bought from you. You sold it. Yeah, dude. Once I started playing seven strings, I at the time I'm like, I'm never, and I just I stopped <laughs> playing that guitar. Oh. And right. I just felt like I'm never gonna play six string again. It's just gonna sit here, so I'll just sell it. And I look back and I want to punch myself in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Oh, We're doing that. that sucks. Then know? fast forward to like a couple weeks ago, I get a text yeah. from Jack. Hey, talk to Mike. Mike, uh, dog ate it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Yeah, what? supposedly Freaking, his they got daughter, his daughter's pit bull ate ate my like guitar. Tore it up. Fuck. But I'm like, dude, pictures or it didn't happen because I'm not sure if I believe that. Does it but, still play? <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, you know what? Maybe maybe it looked kind of cool. I don't when know. He, when he said my daughter my daughter's pit bull ate it, it didn't make it. I wanted to respond with, "You mean the pit bull didn't make it?" <laughs> <laughs> you know. 
lead paint. Get a, get a fret lodged in his throat. So it kind of it kind of sucks, but at the same time, yeah. at least I have closure now. It's like right. now I know I'll never get that guitar. Yeah, right. just, yeah it's yeah. too bad. Yeah, that does suck. But you know, sometimes you just lose the shit. Mike, do you didn't really you want. give your brother your first real yeah. guitar? My first guitar was an Ibanez EX series, so it was like a lower end Ibanez for sure. And my brother ended up that ended up being his first guitar. And then, uh, yeah, then I ended up getting my my black RG seven six twenty. Or Jay ended up getting it for me, and I took forever to pay him back, like a lot of shit over the years. <laughs> Is uh, an Ibanez ES uh, the kind that comes with its the amp and everything? Like, I think no, it, it wasn't like that. It was an e, that. it was EX. No, I, I don't think oh, it was ES. ES. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it it looked a little bit like a uh, like a S series body, but not. You know, it was like rounded horns, and it wasn't like the RG, like the hard cut. Okay. It was it was a kind of a unique looking guitar for Ivan S. You know, it was yeah, nice okay. bolt on neck with a big block on the back. You know what I mean? Like that big squared off block yeah, bolt on. Yeah, nice big chunky one. None of that contour, nice bolt on. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, and I, I ended up getting a um, uh, uh, what is it? Um, my black guitar, the shark tooth inlay is a six string. That's a DX, maybe. Then uh, sound ring a bell 250 DX, something like that. Maybe I could do yeah. you one better. I have a G10, <laughs> which is a wow. starter guitar. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what does the G stand but, for? I don't know. Uh, good. good, I guess. I don't know. Good, good, it's good. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's good. It's okay. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. But Ed, you have also you got a PRS on the ah. line. Yeah, he won that on some show. Hopefully, it's week. coming from Jimmy. Was it coming from Jimmy Ray? Jimmy Ray sent it. Yeah. Yeah. He's sending it. Yeah, it's oh. coming from yeah, the under so the cool. bus. Paul Reed Smith, Jimmy so Ray Network. Cool. That very was very cool. nice. Of I they can't wait just, for that. They gonna, just gonna... had one year. They just celebrated yep. a year. That's gonna mm-hmm. give me a kick in the ass to start playing. Oh yeah, go. RG two seventy DX. That's that was a my brother just oh, okay. hit me up. Oh okay. Oh Tom Balls, is Tom back is watching? Oh yeah, he's watching. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> Tom. My biggest nice. my, my biggest fan. Nice. <laughs> so Tony, you want to get into the, the, the next album? The yeah the, the latest let's, uh let's hear it. Yeah, the, the latest so we the, all watched that happen. Here's what let's do. I'm oh, dying yeah, to o- open right, this up, and I'm thinking it's a it's a under the bus unboxing. Yeah, it's a new and car. That's right. So those yeah. of you, we are live here on this channel, but we are live over on Under the Bus Network on YouTube <laughs> and on Facebook. Hello to all of you tuning in from over there. Yes. Uh, we talk guitar picks and rock memorabilia every oh, Saturday night over here. So thanks for. <laughs> we talk about Peter North over there. You know, <laughs> you know it. All right. I'm going to tear this thing open. Let me do this. We have a mascot and she doesn't even know it. I know. That's hilarious. That chick's, that right. chick's great. Yeah. I want to get her on the show so bad. By the way, Tony. That would be great. Fact, fun fact, Tony. The shirt you're wearing, that was, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't that a special edition made for, like, Hot Topic or something? And we never even signed off on those. We never nice. got any of them, right? It's yeah, all back I, I, to... I, don't, I never seen that one. Or... <laughs> you never got money for that? No. That. Yeah, cool never. Shirt, uh, I was like, what's Hot this? Topic? I was like, all right, we got, like, one with a skull. <laughs> it's like, why is every... – what's with the skull business? I was going to ask you that. I knew it wasn't, you know. Yeah, I mean, I got stuff. I got a couple of skeleton ones in my closet. Oh, hey. <laughs> in the closet. Oh, hey. Yeah, hey. I'm like, what's with, I'm like, what's with this whole – What's with this whole skeleton thing? You know, it, was going, it got a little out of hand. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yep. What you got okay. in there, son? Check it out, yo. What you got? Check it, check it. Let me see if there's anything else in here that I'm not missing. Gert. Gert. <laughs> Just all filling. Gert. Just full. So check it out, dude. Oh, yeah. Got yeah. Oh, yeah. the bus brim. Oh, yes, yeah. I do. The white yeah. back one. Right on. Yeah, with nice. the offset. 
logo. <laughs> the offset Brett. logo is awesome. It is cool. Yeah, dude. That was... Thank you, guys. Hey, you know, you know who thought of the offset logo is uh... Brian Brian Beesman. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Man. And Tony, thank you guys. Thank Tony, you. Um, I don't know how I don't know how your head shape is, but my head shape, a hat either looks good on me forwards or backwards or neither. And this one, I can rock both. And I'm like, holy shit! <laughs> turn, nice. turn it backwards. Jay. All right. Turn, All turn right. It the other way. Turn it the Go other sideways. Way. Go sideways. See what happens. Oh yeah. Right on. <laughs> that's, that, that's that goofy shit. So I'm gonna thank do the rest you of the guys. Show like thank this. you, Jay and Kurt. <laughs> no, no. And Boner and Caleb. Thank you guys so much. Boner. That's great. Brian, Brian Boner. Brian. Brian how did, Beesman. I, I wanted to, how did he get that name, Jay? Who came up with that one? That had yeah. to be you. He did. What, Beesman? <laughs> no. Boner. Bo Boner James. He came up with it. <laughs> yeah. That's that's just, that, you can't come up so, with your own nickname. That's just why sounds I'm so painful. Happy. That's why I'm so happy that Uncle Laser Brian Brian Beesman. Yeah. So now we don't have to, don't have to call him Boner anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you you can't come up with your own nickname. No, no, no. Dude, I just got to give it to you. Right, Brian, right? Brian Beesman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know his name was Brian for like a whole year. You know. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Jay, okay, you told a story. I guess a long time ago of that there was a like some some type of school thing in an auditorium and an auditorium and a computer image and that Brian had to send for school and the heading at the top and the whole auditorium saw boner jams or something like that. Oh shit. Yeah, his kid had to do something online for school. Oh no! And, uh, oh my God! They just logged in under, you know, I guess with his dad's laptop or whatever, and logged in as boner jams. So that's it came fantastic. Up. <laughs> it's, it's Never boner. log in with your dad's laptop. <laughs> I know. You better have gotten an A on that one. <laughs> Holy! Uh, but fuck. Brody's cool enough where you know nobody nobody after with him for that, you know. Right now, that's true. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Chief Brody. <clears throat> You're gonna need Gee, a bigger perfect. boat. Yep. So the new album. What? What do you? Yes. Uh, what do you? So, what do you <laughs> I mean, it 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 took a while, right? Because you had some of the stuff in there for many many years. A lot, a lot of then, the songs, and Mike will tell you, a lot of the songs were written in like 2007, 2008. Right. Yeah, right. 2006, Damn. seven, eight. There's but, one that was written in three. There's one that's written that in one, 2001. Wow. So, I was going to ask you guys just about that exactly. Yeah. You know, the music started. There's 11 songs on the album. There is not a single bit of dead weight on the entire album. Every single song has structure. It's obviously had a lot of thought put into it, not just, you know, you guys' lyrics are very deep. They're very, very deep lyrics, mm -hmm. and uh, they're complex. You guys are on, like, another level as far as the music you guys put out. I hear reggae when I listen to you guys. I swear Whoa. to God, I hear reggae. Wow. I hear I hear all kinds of different influences. The rhythmic part of it, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no shit. Wow, yeah, Charles, yeah. I never even thought of it like that, man. You check it out, bro. Wow. Check it out. I have to um, listen to, to our own listen band. Listen to your own band. Yeah. yeah. Listen, listen to your own band. How's the matter with you? It. There's several songs <laughs> on the album that are just over the top, and you can get lost. You know, the funny thing about it, you may may listen to one section of a song, and you might think think you know. Oh, this is not quite as good as what I just heard. But then you guys change up. You never keep the same structure throughout your whole song. You guys mm -hmm. go like this in and out. Emotion goes back and forth. Speed, it goes fast, it goes slow. When you guys slow okay. down, you clean up. Uh, vocals clean up a little bit. It's uh, it's brilliant, man. And the you guys, the thing about the album, this album was put together. You guys, and correct me if I'm wrong. You guys weren't all together in the same place when this thing was actually produced. That's correct. Which is oh. utterly yeah. blows my mind. So you, Jay, just just as an example, where did you lay your tracks down? Um, well, we, I'll, I'll just give you the kind of timeline or whatever. I think it was March of 2010 is when Jimmy and I and Mike came down for one day. I think we, we tracked the drums at Spin Studio in, in New York City. Okay. Um, that was, I think, three days. We did all... 11 tracks 
Um, and then uh, probably over the next, well, I moved in November of 2010. So I think me and Mike. Didn't practiced. we record the guitar before Jimmy went in to record the drums? Like we no, record was, well, like the scratch the rough, tracks? Yeah, just the scratch the track. drum machine? No? Yeah. Yep. And then Mike and I recorded rhythm guitars between then and when I moved mm -hmm. in, in November of 2010. Yeah. And then Mike flew down to South Carolina to track his vocals. Uh, I think he came down two separate occasions, right? Yeah, I think it was, what was it, 11 and 13 maybe? Yeah, so right there you're talking about, you know, and then Gilmore and Mike, uh, the bass player, uh, Chris flew down together one time and we tracked all of Gilmore's bass guitar. Wow. So, and then I don't think the vocals were recorded until 2016. But it still took five, like five years, I think, or something. Well, now I was recording the... vocals in thirteen. You know that. No, no, no I'm and talking about Bjorn. Bjorn's vocals were recording like yeah, Bjorn or something yeah. like that. Okay. But it well, still took it... all that time to. And to... then the uh, pandemic, and then you finally put it together during the pandemic. You're yeah, like, oh, let's, no, no, let's I, get I this thing of, out. You know? I had a lot of like leads and solos to record still, right. and for a long time. I mean, you guys know this if you watched, you know, either Johnny's show or our show. Like, there was kind of like a nine year span where i didn't play guitar very often so i had to and i was thinking like oh a couple of weeks i'll be back up and running oh no you won't it's yeah. been a while to You've you know and you guys, story yeah yeah and it's it, it took a while for me to kind of get my my chops back but um i mean it just goes to show you it kind of sucks the difference in like we talked about before the difference in how everything is kind of done in the music industry now where nowadays you don't even have to be together to record an album which you know some people might say it's a bad thing but you know i mean we're not if we were a, a rock and roll band i think it would it would have taken away from it but there yeah. is a lot of technicality to it and you know mark <clears throat> yeah. lewis mixed the record did a great job you know it, it sounds like a that's the main thing with us we play very technical stuff but it sounds like a band is playing it sounds like five dudes are playing in the same room and well, not even the right. same room, but just they're playing music. It's not like well, yeah. nothing's robotic and and but no, you know. and it did. It sounds like you're all right there, you know. Yeah. So and that's that's yeah. a testament yeah. to you know absolutely brilliant mixing and all that. Absolutely. Well, well before Mike uh, chimes in, I, I have to say something, Charles. You mentioned, um, you know, the way the songs are and everything, and I know we do have a lot of long ass songs on there, and uh, um, mm -hmm. the biggest compliment I've we've gotten. This is from from my point of view, at least. And we've heard this from multiple, whether it be other bands that, that are fans of us or whatever, or just fans in general of music. That song's eight minutes long. It felt like it was four minutes long. You know, and you can write a long song, because let's face it, I mean, we all know bands that have maybe put out a couple tracks or whatever here and there where there's long songs. And sometimes you're like... Rush. Like it's, Voice of Sanity. <laughs> yeah, well, right? no. I mean, Rush. Some, some, hey. Sometimes... Hey. What? <laughs> No, no. Sometimes it's like, am I still listening to the same song? You know, it's like, is is that happening, or is it? Oh my God, it's Look, the same song yeah. still. For me, like bands like that are like between the Buried and Me and Opeth can sometimes get long winded. They get a little off track. I love those bands, but like they, they I, those are this an example of like songs that are long and they feel long. You know. Yeah, when you can write a long song and keep the listener engaged and make it not feel like a nine minute song, that's kind of like doing something right you know it's it's a difficult right. thing to do even though it's kind of like i don't want to say natural for us but it's very <clears throat> you know you kind of like you said charles it's we thought out a lot of this stuff it wasn't just like we'll put this riff with this riff and this riff no we had to but, make yeah but it together. doesn't seem like that long i mean it you look back on it and oh that's eight minute song but well, it doesn't seem that way mm -hmm. yeah and right. when you're getting lost in the music and you're lost in it time doesn't matter Right. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And so I, I it, it's just, it was, you know, it really caught me like, yeah, it looks good on you, Tony. <laughs> yeah. yeah there you go. You're looking good there, bro. There um, like with Voice of Sanity, I, the first time I heard the song, you can get really lost in the middle of that song. It's about three and a half to four minutes of a complete change from the beginning of the song. Mm -hmm. And the song comes in hard to say it's hard and heavy, it's complex. It's melt your face complex. And then it just goes off into another world. And you come out of that world right back into the same hard heavy that you began with. Uh, I, I thought it was a breath of fresh air for me personally. 
I have gotten out of thrash metal and getting, you know, into the hard, when, when Petrucci came out, I sort of, I sort of, with, with some of my friends and the way that we were listening to music, I, I, I kind of got a little disheartened to it a little bit because it was, it was just something I just, it was a personal thing, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, getting to watch it morph into what it's become is just fabulous guys. Absolutely mm -hmm. fabulous. Yeah, Jay, we, we, put it. we watch you. you promote these, um, and those live streams leading up to it. And we all got the record and yeah. That was cool to watch happen. You know, we, you, I want to say, say this. We first, the first time I ever saw Jay on a YouTube live stream, he came on, he had gotten a new Wolfgang and he mm -hmm. wanted to show it. And still got that one. It, Do you still have that one? No. Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> True question. Sorry. Yeah, no, that, shit. We, that should have been a trivia. It would have been answered instantly. Yeah. Does Jay still no. No. <laughs> Does he have any uh, uh no. did, he <laughs> did you return it or did you sell it? No, I, I returned it. I sent it back to Fender. <laughs> so 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 uh, who who got the ball rolling to put this record out after all these years? Um uh, probably me and Mike probably just going back and forth because there was there was a disconnect for a while there. I mean there was a time in, in the band's uh, history, I guess, where, you know, Jimmy had some wrist problems, so he had to, he couldn't really tour anymore, so we had to kind of get another drummer. And then that drummer, we had him. He's actually still a friend of ours. He's a great dude, but he had some, I guess, anxiety issues, and he, like, literally, what, a week or two weeks before a tour started, he came out to start rehearsals to leave for the tour. He was staying with me at the time, and one morning, he was gone. Oh no! Yeah, like left in the middle of the night, and we, we in the middle of find, the night. Actually, <laughs> yep, and we end up finding out later that our original drummer Jimmy drove him to the airport. Oh yeah! Wow. <laughs> you want to quit too? Oh, wow. I'll pick. I'll pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so then you know we got another drummer for a little while, and then things didn't pan out with that, and it just it it got kind of um, I don't know. I I kind of I kind of we got like discouraged and. We got like we kind of like threw in the towel. It got started getting like, you know what? Like, I don't think this is gonna work, guys. Like financially, we can't do this. Like, I got bills. You know, it's like anything. You know, like, any young band, you, know, you don't have like a, a flow of you know financial stuff coming in. Like, you, you gotta like pick. Like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, and if anybody's listened to our music, you know, the drumming is is easily the most uh, you know difficult thing that's happening. So if anybody's ever looked for a good drummer before, you know how hard it is. Well, think of it times 10 because yeah. there's not yeah, many people on this planet that can play some Yeah, well, like we found guys cool. that could play what Jimmy played, but they couldn't write what he played. So we knew the band was going to go in a different direction playing with these replacement drummers. As far as the creative aspect, it was going to change. And, that, and like they didn't want to put in the dedication anyway because like we had a camaraderie we were together for a lot of years and these guys just come in one guy was from uh you know kentucky the other guy was from cleveland ohio so like they didn't want to like make that dedication make that move to come to new york and like yeah. be, be part of this band that's like what are they doing you know like we, we didn't have like a like a it was like a we were a young band still i know and, and it just know. Didn't, jay, it didn't pan out jay said before too in other on other shows that like jimmy would come up with some and then everybody else would like kind of branch off of that like he'd go let's i'm gonna do this and then you do this and you know he'd kind of direct you guys well a lot of certainly the, you the, know? the fun rhythm stuff i mean a lot of the right. stuff is written jimmy will play a drum beat with a cool you right. know polyrhythmic pattern and then we would just kind of write a riff we just start chugging away on one note just to find the rhythm that's how it would start it and would that's be like, cool it would be I like, like, that. like doing some kick drum right. pattern and then jay would be like one note like just trying to find that rhythm and then we start throwing the chords and you yep. know doing like different kinds of chord progressions it wow. worked that way and and that's it how it started and how did you time. um how did you end up with bjorn like how did you find him for, for the oh yeah i could stuff. tell this one uh well we wanted our original singer to do the album and he just kept like procrastinating procrastinating and just went <laughs> into like years of it 
And then it was just like, well, we, we already put in this much work. At, this, at that point, everything was recorded except for Jay's solos and, like, some of my vocals. And, like, we were like, what's going on here? Like, we, we put all this effort in. Like, fucking, we're just going to, like, shelf this thing? You know, we, we put so much work in at that time <laughs> that we needed to get it out one way or another. So mm. you could tell the story of how we got, you know, with the orange, Jay. Like, just heard, how I'll that happened. You. Oh, well, it's basically... I don't even I don't even know. <laughs> Basically, like yeah, it was like we're gonna try have him do one song or try to get him to on a song, and then like it turned into like, well, what if we, you know, get him to do the whole album, you know, and then we negotiated a little bit with that, and you know, you know, financially. Then, <laughs> well, it kind of ties in with the Ozfest thing, you know. He had he had we had kind of stayed in some not I want to say contact because it's not like we were. You Jimmy know, did, if anything, with yeah, some of the guys. Jimmy did, especially with, with Dirk, the drummer from Soilwork, who's now the drummer in fucking Megadeth, um, nice. which is which is a fun fact. So basically, I mean, we reached out to him. We sent him an email, and, you know, uh, we had seen him again between Ozfest and when he did the vocals for the new album because, like, whenever Soilwork would play in, like, New York City or The Chance in Poughkeepsie, we'd go see him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'd shoot the shit with Bjorn, and, you know, everything was cool. So we reached out, and he was instantly like, I'm I'm interested, you know. And send me send me some songs, and we sent him some shit. And he was like, "I had my work cut out for me," <laughs> you know. Because Charles, you mentioned it's like the you know the polyrhythm stuff. It's not it's not an easy thing to kind of sing over. It's mathematical, and I yeah. bet you guys get driven nuts. That's the why I was. When you guys aren't together, you 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 can't be as cohesive on the fly. And so mm -hmm. when you listen to that music, it is. I mean, it's it crosses genres. It crosses from jazz. You can it's fusion. You can give it all wow. kinds of different labels and names, but Jeez. it's as mathematical as music gets. I Maybe do hear a lot never, of stuff in in your music. I Maybe that's why we never crossed over because it was like too hard to really pinpoint of what you know. Because we did, we definitely have a lot of the Meshuggah influence, which is apparent. You know, even though we. Don't try to sound like them, but uh, you know you the don't sound like stuff, sugar. And, You guys don't sound like. Well, we sugar. definitely really have the influence of like the polyrhythm, you know, stuff going on. But then yeah. we we're all fans of melody, and we want we don't mm -hmm. still want to have a band yeah. where there's just the heavy heavy vocals the whole time. I need melody and harmony guitars and harmony vocals and yeah, melody is what you sink your teeth into. That's what keeps an album like gives it longevity. That's what you want to go back to it. Like you don't want to go back to just nothing but screaming. You want you want to have like that hook. You know, or yeah. that melody in the guitar, or whatever. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, it was funny. You were you were talking about your drummers and the, you know the different different ways you know you would approach a song and have the drummer do this and you wrap things around that. I'll be honest with you. I, every time I listen to your music, I always think about the drummer because the drumming is so un. I, the word I come up with is probably not correct, but I think of unsyncopated. It's not. It doesn't sound like it's supposed to be there mm -hmm. yet. It works out, um, which is half the fun of the music you guys do. I mean, that's the beauty of it. It's the complexity of it. So, wow. yeah, yeah, that just yeah, that's more unpatterned, I guess, right, Charles? Very, yeah, no unsyncopated. To I got to look yeah. that word up. Unsyncopated. Well, it's unsyncopated, <laughs> meaning that it's not that, that what's going on is not hitting on the same beat. Yeah. Yet, I yet, you, I know what you mean. It but... works out. Oh, yeah, it adds measure, up. I guess it, it would up. be. Because, yeah, yep. if you take, like, right. it wraps instance, around. Like, yeah. seven, seven yeah. eight, or what they call it, you know, uh, like, let's take seven, eight, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're playing a riff one time through, and it's like on the downbeat, and then the second time, the drums, you're playing the same riff, but it's now on the upbeat of, exactly. the, of the snare. Like, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, you're, you're, it's playing, a lot the of same, music for you're sure. playing the same riff. But now it's it it sounds, it sounds like it's different. almost yeah. like shifted, you know. And, and I've heard somebody describe it as like you're bending time. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, what you're doing is you're breaking it down measure by measure, yep. and uh, but it always adds up. It always yeah. adds that's up. That's our drummer, like, our drummer really grabs all to the key signature, you know. Yep. It all comes together, right? Yeah. The thing is, is like these guys, like Jay and Jimmy, always knew how to count it, especially Jimmy. Yeah, but like I, I always went off feel with all of our ri hard rhythm stuff. Like I always had the hardest time grasping it because I was waiting for the feel part of it to kick in because I couldn't count it. I still don't know how to do that. Yeah, yeah, hmm. yeah. Yeah. Charles, I just learned a new word. Thank you. I just looked it up. 
Yeah, don't ask me to give the definition of it though. So, so, but so, it's guys, feeling. it's a feeling, you know. Yeah, right. Where, where did the name come from? Go oh, ahead, Jack. God. This is great question. <laughs> Very um, like simple and dumb, right? Yeah, it's really <laughs> stupid. We didn't really have a band name. We were like going between like Orion and I forget what the hell else it was. But I remember sitting in science class in tenth grade. At New Bird Free Academy. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Hates class. And um, he was talking about, I don't know if it was atoms or something. And he was like, you could have these things and they could be called this. It doesn't matter that you could call it Gizmachi. And it's still the same thing. I'm like, you know, I, I did a lot of sleeping in class. But for some reason, Gizmachi, <laughs> I, my, my ears perked up. And it, again, at the time, I mean, it's not a metal name. You know what I mean? If you think of... If you just take somebody who's never heard our music before and say, hey, what kind of sound, what kind of music do you think a band like Gizmachi would play? And it's, it's like... Mariachi music. It's yeah, got to yeah, yeah. 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 be Hispanic yeah. as hell. <laughs> yeah, right? So it's like, you know, it's, it's a different thing. But I guess some people thought that was cool because it's not like the typical metal name you know so so it was you who was writing gizmachi logos on their notebooks in class yeah pretty yeah. much right on, bro. it's nice. actually i i looked it up it's spelled differently G -I -Z. it means your band sucks no 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 it's actually a radio <laughs> antenna it's actually an antenna developed in in uh, early 60s oh, and shit. the guy the yeah. guy that um the guy that came up with it uh Charles Radio Company. The antenna is now marketed as, as Charles Gizmachi. Really? So, yeah. Really? Yeah, oh, it's kind of funny. It's cool. So, so well, that they spell it Japanese for Gizmo. Yeah, like you spell. <laughs> no, you spell it's spelled differently, but it's it's an antenna developed in the in the '60s for Citizen Citizens Band Radio. Wow, so that's pretty cool. So you can just tell that story. Now. Just say, yeah, it's all it's it's mathematical, and we we got it from a. a you know, an antenna because we thought, you know, yeah. that like Jay was sleeping in class and oh yeah, this is it. Gizmachi. <laughs> That's a better story. But yeah. No, That's this was kinda cool. cool. Kinda cool, yo. So yeah. it is actually something. Cool, man. Very cool. Look at that Meshuga pick. <laughs> you got any Gizmachi picks in there, T? I know you do. You said yes, before. Yes, sir. Let's um let's Here we go. I got show. one. He can't give them away though. <laughs> It's I like he says, nothing. oh, we're giving away a Gizmachi pick for trivia. No one's going <laughs> to no no, one's gonna answer. Yeah. yeah. I got none. With the Ozfest logo on the back. Yeah, nice. right on. Look at that. Nice. That's awesome. Right there. I got the, oh, we ran yeah. out. I don't have any more. I got to get some more. <laughs> That's what I got. So this right here is going <laughs> to Randy that Price. Shit. Nice. <laughs> nice. You rock, Randy. Night. Yeah, man. I want a bag of those. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna put that aside for Randy. Let's let's look at some Gizmachi. <laughs> so there's, <laughs> there's one. Look at that there. We gotta get we should get new picks, Mike. Put put your face on them on the right. other side. That's yeah, awesome. the face on one side and just the Gizmachi like that on the other. Yeah. Each get so one made. From Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then. <laughs> yes. Wow, Jay's it's a like white seeing one? these. Jay's seeing these for the first time. Where the hell did you get that? Oh, you I get never that? had a white one. I only had an orange and black. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck? What the fuck? Dude. I didn't know they made white ones. <laughs> Dude. And yeah. look at the back look at of that. that. Look at that. Look at that's that. awesome. This is a scandal. Excellent. Excellent. Pick. Tony bought them all, and, and you know the ones that are out. <laughs> yeah, you sure he cornered the market. One? <laughs> yeah, this is. Hang bullshit. on a second. I got another one. That, oh, that's, look at it! Oh. That looks. That looks stage played. No, we didn't. Me and Mike didn't play the white ones. No. Yeah. Well, then there's this one. Um, Gilmore, play a pick or use. Yeah, those are the that's, ones. That's that, the uh, one. There you, <laughs> go. there you go. We we nice. mainly use those. I used to scratch the hell out of them to get some grip. Is that Let's like see a cream, if this one stage played? A creamsicle. It's not. <laughs> no. no. Oh, that's, not ar that's definitely orange. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yep, that's the one. That's the one. Excellent. Yeah, it's this Tortex 60s, right? 
Yeah. yeah. I moved up, moved up in the world to the... Uh, yeah, Jay, Jay uses this one now. The 73s. <laughs> yeah. The yellow. Bastard. Bastard. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's do... I don't know. Black. Is much. I like how the, like the that, black uh, one has it bigger. Yeah. It's massive. <laughs> it's, it's bigger on that one. Yeah. Well, the black one, I guess, right? Hey, hey. Yeah, you see that? Hey, see what he did there? Excuse me. I did. Yeah. <laughs> it's so big it can't even fit in the screen. Oh, <laughs> hey. God damn. Dude, that flat out. Damn it. We're going to have to make some... <laughs> Tony's got the best manicured fingers on YouTube, though. That's for sure. <laughs> now we're going to pieces here. Moment, he but he fucked up. All right. Looks like the the black pick is it's like twice twice the size as the other ones. It's massive. That, Tony, it's is that? I was over. Every time he starts talking about my fingernails, I start dropping shit. <laughs> 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 Is that a lexicon steel right. spit? That's good. All right. That's good enough. <laughs> Hang on. Let, let oh, the black shit. one just tower over everything. It doesn't matter. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. All right. All, All right. right. Good. Take a picture. All I right. got Squeeze it. it. I got it. I got it. All right. I good. got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Tony. Mm-hmm. Now you won't be able to hear him because the mic is fucked up. Yeah. He'll come back. I have to mute and unmute about three, four times. No, you're not back yet. Nope. <laughs> uh, nope. What the fuck are you All doing? Right. <laughs> All right. <there> you go. <laughs> All right. So, yes, thank you guys for some cool guitar picks. Right on. Where'd you get those? Um. He's got a guy. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't know. I got. It wasn't. It wasn't from Mike or Jay. That's for sure. I, I <laughs> guess yeah. it's that. They came from Ozfest in 05. Well, we did use, to, especially the, I mean, the black and the orange ones. Uh, Dunlop gave us like fucking baggies of them. So we had, you know, it's not like they're like, here, just use them. It was, they gave us that many so we would throw, them them, throw a shitload yeah. of them out, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, but we throw kept them. The crowd, did you? Yeah, yeah right. we did keep a lot of them. <laughs> like, kept yeah, them. Them. yeah, you did not kept throw the them into the crowd, that's for sure. Yeah. Hey, they're still and, around. No. We had so many of them. Well, yeah, I noticed at, years. at the end of your set in 05, you, you spoke about a five-minute stage turnover. As soon, as soon as you guys hit the last note, it wasn't a bow or toss your guitar. You turned around and you're, un, ran, you're yeah. unpacking immediately. Again, it was a part. It was it was part to do with we still have to prove ourselves. We don't want to be up there. You don't want to be the one band like taking your sweet ass time, uh, like oh yeah everybody you know thanks you know walking to the front of stage and shit shanking shaking hands while, you know killing time already. So you right it was it was part of that like you know trying to be respectful of everybody and not want to hold anything up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're right. It it does look funny. It's like damn, dun, fucking see ya. You know, <laughs> yeah. and and get off and, and wheel it off the stage. It's basically what it was. Like boot camp. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Five right minutes. On. Yep. I must say that this hat is very it's very comfortable. Yeah. Very comfortable. Um so I tell you what let's do. All right. That's not it. Let me um before you do that, this is what happens if you stay on too long, Tony, though, on the stage. Jesus. Ouch. <laughs> Love it. Pow. There was obviously tension within that band. Oh, a little bit. We, Jesus. Tony knows the story of that, right? Or you guys said it. I think Tony told it. The guy, wasn't it like the guy didn't know all the words and stuff? Or it was like a... I think they got him last they minute. Got him last something. minute. He didn't know any of the words really? of the song, so the well, guy's just beating the shit be out his of him. Fault then, right? You don't yeah. know anything. Get out! You suck. You hear the guy at the end. You suck. <laughs> hey, Tony, can, Tony, can I ask Mike a question? Sure. Uh oh. Um, Mike, you're Mount Rushmore guitar players. Ah. Oh. I don't think we've ever. 
Yeah, we did. <laughs> and I told you them, and you're like, it's funny because you don't play like any of them. <laughs> well, I think I think I know all of them, but so there's I, four, four on, Fel- on Mount Rushmore. Yeah. So who you got? All right, John Petrucci for sure. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he'd be front and center, but uh, he, he might be. Um, who else? Dimebag Daryl. Nice, nice. I've always yeah. envied George Lynch's playing. Yeah. There you go. Um, probably Headfield. Cool. That's good. You know, that's that's four awesome yeah. players right there. Petrucci could do both lead and rhythm like better than anybody. You know, Headfield's a rhythm machine. He's a beast. That dude's yeah. a beast. He's like George a, yeah. Lynch is just so unique because he doesn't come from like a school of guitar playing, you know, he, he kind of taught himself and you could, t- you could hear that in his playing. And I've always really liked that about him. And then like, you know, Dimebag comes from like Van Halen big time. His, right. his shredding is like, his licks are very Eddie like, mm-hmm. yep. but he, he also with the rhythm, his rhythm is phenomenal. Right. But you know, so was Eddie's. <laughs> and Mike, I, th- I think when I, when you first got in the band, I remember, um, having that conversation with you about like Van Halen. And, and I remember you saying, you know, I'm not the biggest Eddie Van Halen. Uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't think he said fan, but just like you liked him, but it wasn't, you weren't obsessed. Like I was, at yeah. the time, you know? Yep. And I just remember thinking, what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> how could you not be? I, I thought like every guitar player on the planet was like it's Eddie, and then also you're a little you're a little older than I am, yeah, so yeah, like yep. that has something to do with it for sure. You know, yeah, older brother totally. that was jamming friggin' Van Halen down your throat at a young oh, age. Yeah. You know, I had a I had a dad that was jamming Dokken down my throat. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, like, that, right? That's basically what it right. comes yeah. down to Queensrÿche, big time. Yeah. Yep. Jay, who who's on your Mount Rushmore? Um. Hetfield, obviously Eddie Van Halen is is number one. Uh, Hetfield, Eddie Van Halen, um, Larry Mitchell, and Steve Vai. Nice. But it's weird though the last the last year or so, it's uh, listening to a lot of Dream Theater, especially Images of Words, and I'm like, man, is 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 Petrucci going to replace Vi on my on my Mount Rushmore? Because, I mean, anybody that wants to say that, you know, Petrucci's mechanical and to this and to that, it's like, listen to the guitars. And like Mike said, not just his lead playing, especially like Images and Words. I mean, his rhythm playing on that album, shit is hard to get that tight and that clean and, and just the, the thought, like, like Charles mentioned before with the thought of that goes into some music, the thought of a lot of those riffs, like, what how did he think to do that you know the little nuances that he put back then and it's yeah. it's, it's really is crazy you know but again you know when you think of all the great guitarists through history there's only a handful of dudes that are amazing lead players and rhythm players and petrucci petrucci's one of them interesting you know yeah. you can think of a lot of guys like oh yeah he's an amazing lead player but you know rhythm he's, he's good you know, it's it's hard to be amazing at both, and uh, Petrucci is one of those guys. Yeah. Let's um, since since Jay and his crew over at Under the Bus were so kind as to send me this awesome new brim, <laughs> which I am totally in love with at the moment. Let's let's look at they got a a new merch store. Let's let's look at it. Tony, you look great in that in that hat. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Yeah, Tony, thanks for doing yeah. this, man. That, that's that's kind of you. Yeah, most yeah, so, like, oh, so, we ain't showing nobody else's shit. We show my shit. So so <laughs> so look. So they got hoodies and shirts. And look, all there's pro more hoodies. Go to Jay. Flip, show you the back. <laughs> yeah, man. We got a, we're gonna update a couple of those. They got a long shot sleeve shirts. No. You guys got a friggin' mug? Oh, I think yeah. I gotta get that. Women's mm-hmm. tanks right on, and they got a cool cup. Jay Check it out. Oh, it's a cup. Okay. The pounder. The pounder. No. Nice. Is that is that a, is that a plastic cup or a glass no, that's, cup? That's glass. The wolf wow. glass, glass sixteen ouncer. Damn, you guys got I don't know. Boner, nice. uh, Brian Brian Beesman uh, ordered one. <laughs> Brian Brian Beesman. <laughs> he, he ordered a uh, a mug 
and a pounder. And he said they're they're both because he wanted to make sure they were good shit before we started selling them to other sure. people. And it's like next thing you know, yeah. email saying, "Yo, this thing's a piece of shit." <laughs> but, uh, he said, "No, they're they're good." You know? Oh, cool. So, so is that a coffee mug right there? Well, it's it's a whatever you want to put in it mug, Charles. Well, right. it would be Def- coffee. definitely coffee. It's a mug. <laughs> it <would be> <laughs> <coffee>. <laughs> what do you want to put in there? A warm That's beverage. My story a hot beverage. beverage. A mug. A tea. <laughs> So they got men's shirts they got and mugs. Yeah, and they got to pick up some swag. A phone case <laughs> too. Yeah, phone case. Is that a, is that a, is the the uh, red and yellow? Uh, is that a sticker? Yeah, like a Hulk Hogan kind of. I say, guess I got to update. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of the Hogan. Yeah, hell yeah. Hulk Hogan it's colors. Hogan. Yeah, it's nice. It's the brother. Love me some Hogan. And there's the sticker. For the stickers. back of your Hyundai, <laughs> on the Hyundai, yeah. and yeah, they got some... Machi merch store is definitely slacking. Oh yeah, and they got some cool brims it. in the store. So the offset uh, sticker on the hat mm-hmm. is that like um, custom one available man. now? Is are we talking about that has become vintage gear now? It's a collector's Scott, item. Or, uh, Tony has the last one I think yeah, that was ever made. Collector, oh. Collector's item. Oh. oh, you guys already, you guys already pulled. It's a collector's <laughs> item Brian, already. Brian Beesman design. Brian, <laughs> Brian Beesman, Brian. <laughs> yeah. So he, the 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 stuff that that was made already, uh, he knew. He knows a guy that has his own printing shop. So he went ahead and you know Brian funded all the the clothes and stuff, which mm-hmm. was awesome. Um, who, who again? Brian, Brian Beesman. So he had the hat designed like that, and it sucks because I almost, I almost want to contact, um, the merch store and be like, hey, can you have an option to like offset the logo? Like, well, call him, man. That, you know, call him up. You don't know. Yeah. So I think it's, I think it's kind of cool, right? It is cool. It's, I know great. it's, it, huh? it's, it's unique. Great. Yeah. It is cool. It's like, yeah. did that guy mess up the printing? No, it's on purpose. Yeah, yeah it looks, it looks awesome. It does. All I right, love, that's great looking merch, you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, right. so go. They got links to go get that merch. I really like that red hoodie. That's it's got the hoodie too. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's cool. That's cool. So, we have just launched a, a, a merch store around here too. Hey, and we got a couple of okay, some designs. Hats. Well, you got, got panties. Jeep. Got a G string. Oh no, that's Are a those fanny panties? Pack. It's a fanny pack. Oh, it's a fanny pack. It's oh. a fanny. <laughs> you can just oh. wear that alone, Jay. Nothing else. Yeah, so oh. so you have the fanny pack with the show me your pick because at concerts I'm it totally comes in handy. Totally comes in handy at concerts. I'm getting one of those for sure. Yeah. Um, and you got a couple of hat designs and a beanie. Yeah, we got or a mug two. too. There's a mug too. There's a mug there. Um, there is a couple of fruitcake Tony designs with a shirt and a couple of lady shirts and an apron. Freaking for apron. barbecuing. So you can cook with me. With some barbecue. <laughs> nice. Cooking yeah. with Tony. Yep. That's right. Two hat cooking designs with, in that. With fruit cake. A toque and a decal for your Corvette or mm-hmm. your Hyundai. <laughs> the Corvette. There you go. Yeah. And there are some Halenville designs with a premium shirt and a baseball shirt. Cool. Oh, like now, Tony, um, I was I watched the episode um, last week and <laughs> I, I, I was going to play this for you before we went live just to make sure everybody was cool with it. But you know what? You're showing your merch. It's Fuck cool. it. What, what's up? What's up with uh, one of those stickers here? How big is it? <laughs> it is. It's like a five by seven. Okay. Okay. I had I had to record the drop. <laughs> I, I thought was, when Charles asked you how big is it? How big is it? I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I can't wait to hear that on future Under the Bus well, shows. Well, yeah, it will be. It's copyrighted material. It's on your side. I just wanted to make sure you, know, you guys were cool with that. I said, fuck it, I'm going to play it. Yeah, That's no, great. good. That's good. Absolutely, man. It's a yeah. Figures you'd clip that. 
<laughs> of course. <laughs> Nothing gets past us and under the bus, man. No, not at all. That's so, great. so there are some <laughs> Halenville designs in shirts and hats and toques and a hoodie right there too. You can get it in black and in gray. That's cool how you got the like the stripe on the logo too. You know. Thank you. Nice job. Oh, so that was Ed's idea. That's you, Ed. Nice. That's Ed. Very cool, nice. man. That's that's T- awesome. Tony and I. Tony and I brainstormed on the Halenville Live uh, ah, like logo. That. Yeah, I like that a lot. We did, we did some changes. Yeah, we cool. upgraded the, the the look of the original Mark Stone hand drawn. Yeah. Add? Yeah. Yeah, man. This some yeah. serious gourmet shit. Serious gourmet <laughs> shit. All I right, like it on but, I like it on the white. It really looks it pops on the white. I really like that. I don't Wait, think I could wear Tony, a white. Go back hat. real quick, Tony. Go back. Yeah, I know. Oh. Sweat and yeah. How big is it? <laughs> you gotta go back. Wait, wait, you gotta because Mike, Mike, I saw, I saw a shirt that that Gilmore might be interested in. Do you see it on the bottom there in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> what would that be called, Mike? Oh no, a bippy top. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, Gilmore would get so loaded. And again, we weren't the we weren't a partying band. We you know we would drink a little bit and stuff, but it was it wasn't anything. We'd never get into the crazy stuff but from time from time to time gilmore would get really really sauced <laughs> i guess yeah man and he would put on he put on like a girl's hippie top shirt remember the one with like the what was it a, a squirrel's it? gone wild squirrel's on. gone wild he was a maniac anyway it was a girl's Without shirt drinking. just threw it on his belly was hanging out it was unreal oh yeah. shit so whenever yeah, we see was these whenever we see these belly shirts it's like <laughs> pinky tops he did no the best he had the best hairstyles in the band though I think. oh he did yeah besides your uh, your dreadlocks Jack. oh god never again fucking shit locks god they ruined my fucking <laughs> they ruined my scalp they did <laughs> uh funny they ruined my scalp. Oh no! Oh no! Oh. Yeah, I I think the picture B that we showed a couple of weeks ago for trivia. You still have that? Had we... no, I don't. Not loaded you in. Took it out. That okay. had Jay in um, dreads. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember that stage. Like, hey, I know that guy. Yeah. Under his uh, hairnet at work. <laughs> yeah, we you type Gizmachi in a search on Google. Like most of the pictures that come up are from our, like our photo shoots around when we put out the end viewing. A lot of yeah. this stuff is from 2005. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I was looking on YouTube for videos too, and like the one, I don't know if it was the answer or or wandering out. Mike's just like, <laughs> you know, oh, the yeah, one like... picture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the best. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I thought of that right. on the fly. I was like, the camera's all right above me. Let me not sing into the microphone. I'll sing right at the camera at this point. It worked you, out. You guys, you guys did have the best faces. Jay had some good stank face when he's playing. Yep. You know? <laughs> I'm sure you guys stank. don't think about it. You don't think about it when you're doing it. You just Well, don't, no, you, you, know? you don't think about it. And then when you're watching it back, you're like, <laughs> you're like oh what the God, fuck? Look, 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 yeah, we threw video. down in that video. Wandering Eyes video, we were like really going at it. Uh, how did we you were, guys we not... were real tight together, too. We was like real closed. Not you know, have the, neck damage. The answer. That, we were like, I was going to ask the same out. thing. <laughs> I do. Yeah, how did you not have neck damage? During yeah, that? watching yeah, those, man. Like, your heads were like, oh my God, wow. I, I went to it's a crazy. chiropractor recently, and and we, I got an X-ray, and um, I have oh, shit. <laughs> I forget what it was, what it's called. If Jeannie's still watching, she'll know what it's called. But it's basically like from you know giving your whiplash, disease, whiplash for. Uh, you know, yeah. like, speaking of whiplash, like remember Newstead from Metallica, like he had to. Oh yeah, he had to. Doctor stop. Yeah. told him, like you're literally giving yourself whiplash every yeah. night for yeah. for two and a half hours. Wow. You know, you got to stop the shit. Well, it's not, I mean, I, I and I'm this is like a Slipknot thing, but I wonder if that's why Craig Jones left the band. <laughs> well, he, I, every I don't know if he left or he got fired. I have no. We have I, no. We, idea they what still happened. don't. They still don't know. I'm pretty we sure have, he. Le- I'm pretty sure he left. You have to ask Brian Probably. Beesman, but. Uh, <laughs> Brian, but like, Brian Beesman. Every show, though, you see it, Craig's like this the yeah. whole time. The whole time. The whole yeah. entire time. I'm like, dude, how do you, you know? Well, Angus. Angus well, Angus, it. too. I don't know how Angus does it either, but, you know. It's not good for you. I mean, I know. No, it like, can't be good for you. I, I always remembered the first show of any tour. It was like, you know, you think you're, you're pumped. You're like, hell yeah, first show. 
and then after like you wake up the next day, day and you can barely move your fucking everybody's, <laughs> yeah, everybody's right. like walking around like this like hey what's I going bet. on hey yeah, what's up it was freaked up you know? <laughs> and then like yeah, after, my... after like the third show you start to get fu- you know into it but i remember yep. like the second show was always the worst because like you're so stiff from the first one Everybody yeah like, like my part of my spine in between my shoulder blades is fucked yeah, it, yeah. it's it's not yeah. right anymore <laughs> it can't be no that's crazy so, so after 2021's Omega Collide, is there any more material left over for anything in the future, guys? We, we used it all up, didn't we, Joe? Anything left in the <laughs> tank, boys? Yeah. We, we talked about, um, you know, maybe doing, doing some covers. We actually yeah. kind of recorded one. We did uh, record one. I'm I'm dying for it to come out. I don't know what Jay's slacking about, but <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, yeah, we did Drop a it, man. Drop should it. we tell him what we did? <laughs> Go ahead, Brendan. Brendan, can I send you a picture? You sure can. And then you can show on here. My wife just sent me. Uh... I can. Yeah, I think I can share it. Okay. Let's see believe. if I can copy this to you. I believe so. Were yeah, we sent... go ahead, Mike. You can uh, say we did a, we did an outfield cover. We did the. Um, uh, what was it? Your love. Your love. Nice. Oh, yep. nice. Really cool. Yep. Huh. Just doing and it. Just you're... basically mm-hmm. doing it. Just like the original. <laughs> like pretty, pretty damn close <laughs> to the original. Uh, yep. shit. Yeah. And you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to do that song is I remember we were playing. I even forget where the hell we, we were. were in uh, New Mexico, I think, or Arizona. You, were, or you remember this shit, and I don't. But I remember Mike was warming up, and we our our uh, dressing room was in the basement of this of this club. And I remember Mike was warming up, and he fucking belted that shit out. And it was like, damn. And I always remember that, like, Mike, you nailed that song. Like, just singing an acapella in the dressing room, warming up his voice. And ever since then, I was like, that would be cool to, to do that song. And um, so we recorded it. But, you know, I'm thinking, you know, lately, I'm like, you know what? Maybe we should, you know, put out a couple covers or something. I'd okay, like to dude. hear that, man. Sure. Damn. So what made you guys pick uh, the outfield? How'd that come up? I thought I just... <laughs> oh, sorry. Did you just say it? I kind of. I mean, Edward I don't know. Edward. It was kind of during the whole, uh, you know, quarantine jams. Yeah. Everybody, or yeah. what, what, are they, what were they calling them? Every band was doing the stuff. And yeah, then, the COVID uh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's kind of the reason why we were like, all right, let's do it now. And then. Right. And then it wasn't a hot commodity anymore. And then it got shelved. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. It's pretty much. Yeah. Why it stopped. Well, then but, the album came out, right? Or was it after too. that? I don't remember. Whatever the hell the timeline is. Brendan, did you get that picture? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it now if you guys want to see it. So remember earlier we were talking about the. Uh, the van or bus in Europe. <laughs> Oh, blow Jesus. that shit up! Goodness. If you could blow that up, that'd be that'd Just be awesome. See if I can make it bigger or not. That's what she said. Tell me if it gets bigger. <laughs> <laughs> this is big. That's as big, big as I can make it. I think. That's what oh, she said. How big is it? Keep, keep going. <laughs> that's, that's about it. That's yeah, just it, look yeah. how freaking tired we look, especially in the bottom one. Look at Jay. He looks like he's <laughs> stoned. <laughs> and I was not. But no, like exactly. what, it looks like if you if you had no idea where we were and somebody said, "Hey, where do you think these three idiots are?" Right in that picture, you'd be like, "In a fucking movie theater in the back." <laughs> that's a, that's that's the yeah, van. It does. Yes. Holy <laughs> crap, dude! Yeah, that does not look like a van. That's it, a freaking van. Like, yeah, it's look like those are the right seats. Right they didn't know where they screening. were. I think you're in a private screening of some movie. That's yeah. why we took the photo like that. Like we're watching a movie, the top one. Right. Yep. Terrible movie. Yeah, <laughs> Mike Balls looks like he's sixteen. Like, Gee, yeah, yeah, man. Wow, that's. I look. I looked young when I was young. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Jay does look. <laughs> the bottom picture, Jay's like, I'm done. I'm, yeah. I've had enough. We were we were freaking <laughs> shot. We hadn't slept you, in God knows shit. how long. <laughs> you guys are freaking fried. But again, right. the, the driver he had to drive. I think it was. All right. Yeah, our first show wow. was in 24 hours in Italy, and it was a 21-hour drive. I think that's what it was. One dude had to that's had funny. to make that whole drive. Could you imagine that? No. God. We drove through the Alps. <laughs> the Alps. Jesus. And then, and then we got pulled over in, what, crossing into France? 
was it? Remember, remember the guy in the in the hat and the boots at the toll booth? Yep. Pulled With the blue jack. And and brought brought our driver into the uh, whatever the hell it was, like into the booth area. And he was in there for a while. We're like, he's getting fucked. <laughs> we, had to, we had to pay. We had to pay a goddamn toll or a, um, oh, a no. ticket, a fine for uh, going through some toll booth. I guess we were going too fast or some shit. Oh shit! And he oh. showed us a picture of us. In the, in the, oh, wow. It was pretty at wild. least you guys. At least you guys didn't get under the bus like Cliff Burton. So you're all. Oh set. my oh. god! Oh. Come on! Wow. You started it too soon. Oh. You started it, Brian. Brian Beesman. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's too soon. That's one time. I watched. So, I, so, I watched that. So, so Jay, while he, while the driver's <laughs> in the hut, wondering what the hell your the ultimate fate is, were you guys discussing who was going to drive the bus after that? Right. Yeah. You were kind of worried, like we're on a you're time. Lost. We're, on, you're we're on a, stuck. Yeah, we're on a time you know restraint here like we we don't have much time to get to this gig and yeah there's uh, no time to stop we gotta drive I'd have been like country. i'll drive this motherfucker <laughs> we, we, we just didn't know we're like are they are they gonna come out and start like confiscating our gear are they not gonna let us go like we were like is this whole thing gonna be for nothing it's yeah. no we're we gonna be in jail <laughs> we're in a different you know other side of the planet we had no idea what was gonna happen wow so wow. that's crazy wow. crazy yeah. this whole thing was wild Mm-hmm. It all happened very fast. <laughs> it's like awesome. span of like two and a half years, like the two thousand four, five, six, like barely six. Mm-hmm. Like six was like on the it was all coming to an end, really. But it is weird how like it just it feels like it was a long time, but most of the time is is just kind of like um, getting to that point, you know, like this, you know, busting your ass to get there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, Brendan, you want one more? Sure. Okay. This is one of my favorite pictures of uh, of Mike and me. Mike and me. <laughs> Mike and me. No, nope. that's going on. Hang this on. isn't the nude one, is it? No, it's the nude one. <laughs> yeah, I gotta send this to myself. I remember taking this picture. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, Jesus Christ! I told you, people think I'm goofy by myself, or with when me and Balls get together. Yeah, we're we're a little tame right now. It's been a while since we hung out, <laughs> but yeah, it's good stuff, boys. Belly laughing. Like, Take, your time, man. Take your time. Take your time. I'm getting there. I had to send it to myself. You have to, you have to close all the uh, browsers, uh, browsers to get to the, uh, <laughs> browser, <laughs> browsers, browsers, Beesman, <laughs> Brian Beesman browser. He's going to have his own browser. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Can you send me a bigger picture. You, like, like this it's full, big, dude. They are. Like, oh, no, this one's kind of small. Yeah, it's small. Yeah. Yeah, let me, let me you can't, you should be able to said. zoom in on it. I yeah. can't. I don't have the technability. <laughs> technability. I got no technability. Where's well, I can't actually. Where's my share? Present. Didn't share you work for IBM? IBM? Yeah, but I didn't, do, I didn't do freaking computer shit. What did you chips. do, hardware? Chips, oh. dude. Make chips. chips. Okay. Make chips. Here. Make potato chips. chips in the factory. Here, send my conductors. Yeah, that's that's as big as I can make it. How about Jeff. that one, Tony? No, get rid of that, Tony. Get out of here. <laughs> Tony, present mine. I, I share the screen. Oh no! Uh, Alan Arkin. That wasn't Alan me. Alan Arkin passed. I don't have happened? Facebook. There you go. Yeah, Damn. nice. Oh, there you go. <laughs> look how look how fucking youthful we are. Yeah. Jesus. Nice. Jay's ball, like, ball. I've been up for seven days straight. <laughs> Screen that, B. Oh, I got it. Young yeah. balls. Yep. Young balls. <laughs> nice. Young almost, full balls, but not almost, after that picture. Look at that oh, fucking oh. shirt. Damn, I think that was the last time I ever wore that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you saw the picture like, why am I wearing that? I've got, I've got the wrong I was, way, I was going got, for the I was going for the grunge look. You got a little sideshow Bob going on there, boss. Yeah, I got that. called that a lot. I bet you did. That's not okay. nice, but you know it's all right. You pulled it off. Yep. Jay looks like he has twenty ex- espressos. Uh, <laughs> probably had twenty monsters. Yeah, yeah. monsters. Yeah, monster. Yep. I didn't have it back then. 
Yeah, that's a good one. That, that was on cool. tour with we were on tour with Chad. That really? was in that was in Buffalo, that shot. Jesus Christ, how the frig do you remember that? I remember. God. It's weird. I have a great memory with certain things, especially when I see the picture. I like I, I remember being in the van. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Man. Buffalo. Awesome. awesome. That is cool. So so in 05, how how many US dates were there? Just on Ozfest? Yeah. Oh shit, I don't I don't remember, man. It's like Mike said before, it was, it was like really, it was like major city stuff. I mean, look it up, Ed. Look it up, Ed. Come on, Ed. I don't know. What would you say? Thirty something dates. We uh, we did it. Uh, I think it started beginning of July and then went to beginning of September, didn't it? No. I don't yeah. remember. I think it ended beginning of September and it started somewhere in the middle of July. Teens of July to like single digits of September. And we didn't play every fucking day. Yeah, July. Yeah, July to September 4th. Damn, I West really Palm Beach was the last. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. West Palm I got first picked, one I got was Hartford, up with my girlfriend at the time, and yeah, that was fun. The first one was Hartford? Wait. Oh, uh, no. Mansfield. My, my town. Oh. Well, where the Sorry. hell were you, Ed? I wasn't there, man. I don't know why I didn't show up. I, 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 2004, I, I quit going. When was she rattle off, going? rattle off the first few dates. Yeah, when was I'll she tell you when my like boys came back. back. <laughs> uh, you got July, July 15th in, in Mansfield, the Tweeter Center. That's where I blew. Uh, July 17th, Hartford. That's where Mike's guitar went out. Yep. <laughs> July 19th, Camden. Ooh, that's, uh, what's that's that? Brutal. New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. That's where that, it came was, out. Uh, July 20th. that was the Ozfest video. Okay. July 21st was, was it say Corfu? Derek? No, Corfu. Corfu. What the hell's Corfu? I don't know what the hell Corfu is. <laughs> what the hell is that? What the hell is he talking about? Uh, New York. It's in New York. <laughs> Corfu? Corfu. I never C-O-R-F-U heard of that. C-O-R-F-U is a village in Tennessee hey, County. You. Oh. They, they must have just added that show because uh... – July twenty first, <laughs> July twenty third was Burgett Town, Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah, that's when we started catching our stride. July twenty fifth was They're, the memories Bristow, are getting hazy at this point. Virginia. I remember Virginia. That's when Gilmore was first out. Virginia. Mm-hmm. Then you play two dates in uh, Holden. Um, that was the, that was the one my brother. New Jersey. Out. That was the hot one, Jay. 26, oh, 27. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Tinley uh-huh. Park is next in uh, Illinois. Yeah. That's, the one, that's to, the one. Yeah. That's the one I went to. Then Noblesville, uh, Indiana, in July. Indiana was awesome. 31st. Yeah. We had a really good day that day. We kicked so, ass that show. I mean, I can keep going. <laughs> there's, there's a shitload. Yeah. Keep going, Ed. Keep going, bro. Uh, we See, got, you're uh, making me miss it. You know, I. Columbus, I, uh... Columbus Ohio. August second, Clarkston, Ohio was the other spot that people really started grasping onto. We had like turnouts when we go when we went back to Ohio, Columbus, especially like we started getting like some turnouts. Like nice. they they caught on to us like out of the other states like the most I think. So you were you were mid going Midwest on this one. Uh, yeah. You have uh, Clarkston, Michigan. Then you got East Troy, Wisconsin. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Minneapolis, August seventh, Greenwood Village, a uh, Greenwood Village in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. I don't Auburn, remember playing in Colorado. Auburn, <laughs> Washington, August eleventh, Mountain View, Santa Clara County, California, mm-hmm. August thirteenth, San Bernardino is somewhere in there. Then you played Wheatland, which is uh, in California, yeah. two nights in a row. Hey, Carol. Thanks, Carol. Good to Carol see you, going ma'am. Carol, going to be it. West Valley yeah, City I've and been up Utah. Since, since quarter to six this morning. <laughs> oh, shit. West Valley City uh, in Salt Lake County, Utah. Then you played Phoenix, San Bernardino. Phoenix, oh, I almost got beat up at the, at the Phoenix show. San Bernardino <laughs> Clown came out to see us. I remember that. 
San Bernardino wow. show, a clown came out to check us out. What would you do, Jay? <laughs> um, so the Phoenix show. Yeah, let's hear that one. It was uh, hotter than a motherfucker. Everybody knows that's ever mm -hmm. been to Arizona or the Phoenix area. And oh, yeah. our boss, um, the AC, the generator went, you know, because it was too oh. hot. And, you know, it's dry ass air. So and overheated, died. Yeah, the generator. So it was fucking hot as shit. And uh, our bus driver, um, which we were cool with him, right? No problems or anything like that. And then I remember just sitting on the bus and the generator went and I was like, what a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he took he took it personally, oh, and boy. he basically like fucking just went after me, you know. Oh wow! And I just Shit, remember dude. thinking like, what do you what what do you talk about? I'm, I'm talking about the bus, like, you, you know. Maybe, maybe he, he built it, man. He was pissed. <laughs> but then, but then, you know, what's funny is he ended up getting uh, arrested soon after for soliciting <laughs> minor. Um, well, uh, well uh, uh, everybody you interact with gets arrested. <laughs> so the other oh, guy's in jail, and then this me. guy, <laughs> jeez, don't mess with Jay. He'll be in jail. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, they, get, they get sent back like the guitars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're afraid they see Jay handed on the on the shipping thing. Like, ah, shit, this is coming back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he boy. went there, Jay. He did. UPS must yeah. know you really well. <laughs> um, no. What, what do they call that? R RMA? A return? Uh, yes. RMA. Yeah. RMA? Yeah. Monique says, did you guys tour OzFest with Andrew CK or System of Down? No, that was uh, probably before us, right? Yeah, I would say so. I think so, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Oh, 05. The, the that was probably band. 01 or some shit. Yeah, like, probably. System of a Down came out with Toxicity in 01. They, their first album came out in 99, but I don't think they were on OzFest that year. Could be wrong. Like there was so, Mudbane. Um, who the hell else was on the, the the first stage? Besides, obviously Iron Maiden and uh, Ozzy with Black Sabbath. I forget. Uh, who the hell was it? What does it say? Ed? When did when did Pantera? Which play? Uh, was that ninety uh, six? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, hold on. Let me look. Oh five. Oh five, Ed. Come on, Ed. Yeah, I'm on it. Uh, Mudvayne. Uh, let's see. Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, Mudvayne, Shadows Fall, Black Label Society, In Flames, Velvet uh, Revolver. Nice. Well, well from certain one, certain dates, certain dates. Yeah, yeah. Maybe August twenty third to September fourth. Yeah. Slipknot and Drowning Pool. Yeah. August twenty fifth only for Drowning Pool. Yeah, Slipknot only July thirty first and August twentieth. Wow! I, I, then, I then Zombie was on the second stage. Yeah, headline the second stage. Yeah. Yep, he was on the second stage when I saw. Really? Yeah. Now, weird. Kill Kill Switch went on before Rob Zombie, right? Every yes. Day? Yeah. Yes. And Mastodon was before them. I believe. Uh, no, as, as I lay yeah. dying. Oh, as I lay dying was after wow. Mastodon. Then right. Right. Mastodon was too, right? But uh, Mastodon, doesn't... as I lay dying, Kill Switch, and Rob Zombie didn't have a rotating slot. They were the the headliners of the second before. stage. Yeah. Yep. Jesus. A Dozen Furies, The Haunted, Arch Enemy, yeah. Yeah, Black remember. Dahlia Murder, yeah, Black Buried yeah, Dead. Remember those guys. They were fun. They were cool. It Dies Today, Soil Work, Gizmosi, <laughs> <laughs> Wicked, 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 Wicked Wisdom, and Trivium. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's it. Oh, shit. <laughs> so who were the guys... Also... Who were the guys that got to play both the first stage and the second stage? Oh, like for a different year, you mean? Like they started out in the second stage and then a year or two or whatever later. Dude, they were bunch. Right. Yeah. That's a good question. That, that's a good trivia question there, Tony. They're, they're, oh, my God. There must have been a bunch because I, I went to so many of them that I, I saw bands on the second stage and then a Slipknot year or two was, later, they were on the first right. stage. Slipknot was only on like Oscar on the second stage, right? They never went to the main stage on Oscar, right? they did. Except like the uh, second stage. I thought they did. Uh -huh. I thought I remember seeing them on the main stage one year. Maybe. Maybe like around when Iowa came out or something. Mm. Mm. Main stage, Slipknot, 2001. Yeah, right before that. Black Sabbath. Oh. Damn. That's when you know, I would know that's that. That's when I saw I remember Brian, seeing them. Brian Beesman. 
<laughs> right. I mean, they, I mean, they went. They, Tool went on before them. Jesus. Wait. Tool and Papa, was on pa- <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Damn. I remember what? seeing a girl walking up toward me with this Tool, like halter top on. It was black with white with letters. Huge I'm like, set of knockers. Yes, huh? exactly. And I was like, <laughs> holy yeah. shit! Look at that. That's awesome. Nice Tool. You know. Nice Tool. Whatever you call the top. Tool and, um, she didn't have a tool. It was she? it was painted. It was yeah, painted on. As she got as she got oh. close, I was like, "Oh, oh that's wow, shirt. that's <laughs> nice." <It's a> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, so head PE was on the main stage that year too. Jesus, what? It was <laughs> it was ra- raging raging speed horn head PE soulfly Papa Roach Tool Slipknot and Black Sabbath. Oh, wow. Jesus, all on the main Ray, stage. Wait, all Ray on the main Speed stage. Horn? <laughs> I've never heard of that band. Raging <laughs> Speed Horn. I have what no the, idea who those are. Wow. Raging Speed have, Horn. I better go. They only have look one up. stage that year or something. And they were on the main that was, stage. That was in the UK, actually. Oh, well, <laughs> pretty but we right back. In, in, right back. In, the, in the US, in the US on the main stage, it was Black Label Society, Crazy Town, Disturbed, Lincoln Park, Crazy Papa Town? Roach. Slipknot, Marilyn Manson, and Black Sabbath. There you go. Yeah, Black Sabbath headlined a lot. Yeah. Yeah, when you got back why. with the guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. That's um, cool. Yeah, so... Uh, it went so on you, for quite a few years. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Um, I remember Ozzy you know, retiring in 96, and I was like, oh, what the fuck? So I went to that tour... <laughs> And um, actually, oh, there you go. Oh, Hell look yeah. at that! Wow, freaking good jacket. <clears throat> that that awesome sucks tour. <laughs> Retirement sucks tour. Nice. So, and then when they announced Ozfest, I'm like, "What the? F- All right." <laughs> so, I went to every one of them except I didn't see you oh, guys. Five. Sorry. <laughs> Except 05. Except 05. Except 05. And 06 Damn. or whatever, however else they lasted. Yeah, I remember the year after us, they did like way less cities. Like it, they, they chopped down the. the they length sucked of time after and, you guys. Yeah. Actually, they, they went to 2010 in, in the U.S. and then, then they went to Japan and did a couple. Yeah, so it was the 10th anniversary year, uh, our year. Okay. Oh. And I. I guess that was like kind of like the last hurrah, like the bigger kind of setup. That was the yeah. best year. That was the best year. That's because we were on it. Exactly. That's the only reason. They could have just put us out there. And it's like, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise band, who? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I still remember, you know, I've, I've, I've said what? this on the Under the Bus show before, but like, you know, negative comments have never bothered me with anything. Like, it's just like, what are you going to do? You know, there's always going to be right. people that are going to yeah. be negative. Always. And, and I look at it as like, well, that means you're doing something, you know? But I still remember looking at the comments on, like, Blabbermouth and shit when, when we were announced as one of the, the special... Uh, yeah, we, we, they secret. ripped into us hard. It was... It was oh. It's like, shit, you know? We we went from, like, Who? thinking this is great, and then all of a sudden it was like, <laughs> we're, we're, like, the hated band. And it's like, damn, that kind of sucks, you know? Yeah, so but... It, but- Wicked Wisdom got shit like thrown at them and stuff at one yeah, of the couple of shows. That. Like people oh, were like wow. turning around, like putting their backs to them and shit. It was like that. assholes. That's why. Wow. Yeah. Some people are fucking. So what are you gonna do? Pull a pull a Wolfgang Van Halen and like just you know answer every one of them with a. No, I. I, I <laughs> what, what, what are you gonna do? I mean, I would. I could only. I could only dream about having that kind of success musically. But I mean, if we did, I wouldn't. I wouldn't respond to anybody like that. It's yeah, like you, like I said before, it's not worth it. The percentage, yeah. the more your fans grow, the more the haters grow. It's yeah. always a, a yeah. percentage that there's always. Right. And it, yeah. it, I don't know. I just I have a different outlook about about that stuff. Is you know, what are you going to do? Can, you can see the crowd response, though. You can right. see you, you know, yeah. You can't Either way, they're press. they're still watching, you know. So yeah, that's right. Obviously you're watching like, if they're if they got comments. Well, while you're sitting there, well, you're still watching. While that's you're right. driving yourself nuts about what right. I'm doing, right? You're 
that's what you're doing. So that's right. that's how I always look at shit like that, you know. Bad press is still press. There, right? There's always going to be haters, no matter what you do. Yeah, that's right. There's, Trolls. There's jealousy and envy and all kinds of other shit. Well, once you once know. people see that it gets to you, though, that's when it even right ramps yeah, up. It gets more. worse. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. You just can't acknowledge it. Yeah, like like body. Richard Patrick from Filter. <laughs> he's oh, notorious. He, really? Yeah, like he just like every time someone says something, like he's right there, like you know, like commenting. He gets with the political, the whole thing. One time he said something, I was like, "Why don't you go?" I was like, "Why don't you go back to doing uh, stuff like title a record and the amalgamate?" You know, like when you guys were freaking awesome. And then he like wrote back, "Fuck off." <laughs> <laughs> you have been blocked by Richard. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, I, like I, I did like a nice little paragraph, like basically oh, no. saying like, how your early shit rules, whatever the fuck <laughs> you're doing now, stop fuck doing. Off. It. Wow, well, like, so you're one, you're one of those guys that that uh, wow. went after a little bit, huh? What's that? Uh, so you're one of those guys that went after a, a musician about what they're doing. Yes, I did. <laughs> you can oh, your opinion. In a, I was sitting in a hospital room at the time. I had nothing better to do. I got there you go. There you go. So, yep, that's understandable. Well, Jimmy Ray Hawkins. In. Wow, he says uh, show is still going. <laughs> We're still going, man. Yeah, dude, this is over thing. three hours. Holy shit. Holy crap. Yeah. yeah. Long ones. That's what she I'm said. Start, I'm starting oh, to hey. hallucinate. I've been up since six o'clock. Yeah, man. How this big has it? been fun. Uh, if you guys absolutely. Absolutely. It's been a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, it's been awesome, guys. Time know. gets away really from you. This. It does. Absolutely. Well, Tony, what I remember we were talking about before with the length of songs, when, when you're on for three hours and 20 minutes and it doesn't feel like you've been on for three hours and 20 minutes... That's right. That's a good thing, right? Yeah, man. Sure. You're doing right. Absolutely. So, before I forget, and while it's on my mind, while I'm looking over at my calendar, we we just discovered, like, last Tuesday that the 4th of July is on a Tuesday this year. Oh. Um, Tuesday. Tuesday. This so, coming Tuesday. This coming Tuesday, we have decided that we are, in fact, going to do a show oh. for the 4th of July. Hell yeah. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> so we'll be right back here on Tuesday, just a couple of days away, talking all things Van Halen. That's right. Sorry. <laughs> so you one are... of my favorite subjects. Sorry. <laughs> that was a little loud. That's yeah. all right. It's supposed to be. That was me. That's Sorry. cool, man. It's all good. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, nice. and also, everybody, if you are in need of some custom guitar picks, we know a guy, Greg at Legend Picks. You'll find the link down below. He's made guitar picks for all these people and yeah. for all of us, and he'll make them for you too. He's a great dude, does great work. Yes. Check him out. Legendpicks.com. Links He's are fast. down in the description. Yeah. He's so, fast, and man. you guys nice. wanting a custom cigar box guitar built. Oh. We yeah, know a guy it. too. Oh shit! Yeah, I know that. I know we're not showing. Going on. <laughs> Look at that young guy. Got it going. His on. links are down below. He he can make you something that looks like this even. Damn. <laughs> That's a pain in the ass. Better work. I don't want to do it. Yeah. It's a pain in the ass. I'll do it. It's a pain in the ass. No, nah, it's fine. <laughs> I got one left, but I ain't selling it. So. He's, He's not sending selling it. To, uh, I almost said my address. Now. He's sending it down to South Carolina. No, I got the shovel. But yeah, man, I make you one. I still got to make you one, Jay. No, you, you don't have to make me. Make Jay. Jay wants one with a freaking Floyd in it. So that's. Well, I want one that looks like a big dick. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. <laughs> make it like, what are you doing? I'm making something for Jay. <laughs> I'm making a dick like with a me. Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> you can really bend that one off. Yeah, I just want right. one string, and I, and the only note I want it to hit is bow, 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 or has it go balls when you're the. What the bow, 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 bow. You, <laughs> you want a diddly bow? I got a one stringer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's> <laughs> uh, like that. 
<laughs> you just you just want to slide your hand up and down that fret that, that neck. I don't want to have like a, a, a container at the top and then a trigger, and then it just squirts <laughs> at people. Oh Never no! Mind. We'll go. We'll. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> you want me to want it to say that too when you pluck the string? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yep. You can do that. That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So, guys, I, I guess we're going to wind things down. This has been so much fun. Jay Hannon, Mike Balls, dudes, Let's thanks for being rock. here. You rock. You're welcome. You're thanks awesome. for having us. Yeah, yeah dude. It was a good time. Thank you so much. This has, been, this has been some kind of fun. We've been waiting a, a mighty long time to do a gizmachi. <laughs> Show me your pick. Yes. <laughs> what? Genie. 325. Uh, that's why I haven't only, sent them what yet, Genie, I'm afraid. Only 35 more minutes. That's hilarious. Shit, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's Sunday already. I know. We are going to wind things down. Jay, Mike, thanks so much for Thank doing you this. You're welcome. Um, Thank you, guys. Thank you so yeah. much. Everybody, thanks, thanks so much for watching. Leave a thumbs up on the video. And subscribe here if you're not already. We talk guitar picks and rock memorabilia every Saturday night. Do join us here this Tuesday as we celebrate the 4th mm -hmm. and talk Van Halen this Tuesday, 9 p.m. Hope to see you then. Guys, hang out backstage. Everybody, have a great weekend. Happy 4th. We'll see you next Saturday night. Peace. We gone. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> A potato flew around my room before you came. Oh, yeah.